expanded trilateral concept. Of course, pinpointing Islamic fundamentalism comes as no surprise from the neocons, to whom defense of the state of Israel is always the overriding goal. But in addition to the negative, there is the positive, the vaunting along with the fear. The positive carrot is the old Wilsonian dream of the U.S. as a global imposer of democracy. Since very few countries can pass the democracy test or have ever done so, this poses an objective that suits the establishment interventionalists fine. For here is a goal that can never possibly be achieved. A goal that can never be reached, but can always be kept shimmering on the distant horizon, is perfectly tooled for an endless policy of massive expenditure of money, arms, blood, and manpower in one foreign adventure after another. What the great Charles A. Beard brilliantly termed perpetual war for perpetual peace. Prophetic words by Murray Rothbard. Now we turn to what's going on in today's headlines. As we see, are the Marines ending their Afghanistan operation? Well, the story from CBSNews.com says so. They're coming home. But is that true? I'm skeptical. In a ceremony Sunday morning, in dusty desert sunlight, U.S. Marines and British combat troops officially marked the end of their operations in Afghanistan, transferring Camps Leatherneck and Bastion to Afghan control. As national anthems from the three countries played, service members from all three countries stood at attention. The Marine flags were ceremoniously furled and cased in recognition of the end of the mission. But is that just symbolic? Because other headlines indicate that the killing hasn't stopped. 716 killed as army and Persmaga forces liberate Iraq towns. Hundreds of militants were killed in security operations across Iraq on Saturday. At least two strategic towns were brought back under Iraqi control or Kurdish control. Two more towns were also liberated, but at least 716 people were killed and 107 were wounded. Very few security deaths were reported in the violent clashes, so the numbers are likely much higher. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. I'll leave you with a quote from Winnie the Pooh. Promise me you'll remember you are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, smarter than you think. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org.
Instead of just listening, you can also watch. See the Liberty Radio Network's key New Hampshire-based live shows via our studio cam at cam.lrn.fm. Plus, you'll still be able to listen to the Liberty Radio Network via the cam feed in high quality 24-7, even when there's no live show being produced in our keen studio. But wait, there's more. Our chat room is built into the cam page so you can interact with other listeners online. Listen, watch, and chat. All free at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Lock it here for more live content. Free Talk Live is next on the Liberty Radio Network. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, November 2nd, 2014. Silver is trading at $16.17 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,173 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $327. Antiwar.com reports the election in the rest of Ukraine was loudly cheered by the international community, but this weekend's vote in the breakaway eastern oblast of Donetsk and Luhansk is being condemned by most of the same people. The election will create the first parliament of the Donetsk People's Republic and will assemble the prime ministerial form of government. The republic will serve as the de facto autonomous region and also the potential government if they secede outright. Recognition of the election seems to be along the same line as recognition of the rebels themselves, with Russia promising to accept the results and the U.S. and E.U. outraged both at the vote and at Russia's recognition. The Donetsk People's Republic, formed after the protesters in western Ukraine ousted the pro-Russian government and the new government banned the Russian language, ubiquitous among ethnic Russian Easterners, the war that followed has mostly stalled and negotiations for a settlement center around granting the Easterners some measure of self-rule, along with the restoration of Russian as an official language language. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. Reuters reports Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Saturday urged lawmakers to show restraint over Jerusalem's Al-Aqsa Mosque, which has been at the heart of the rising tension with the Palestinians in recent weeks. Daily clashes between Israeli security forces and Palestinians in the streets of East Jerusalem and the Al-Aqsa compound, known to the Jews as the Temple Mount, have been stoking fears of a new Palestinian infatata or uprising. In a sign of concern that the situation could escalate, Netanyahu called in a statement on all Knesset members to calm tensions regarding the Temple Mount and show responsibility and restraint. The Palestinians say Israel is looking to change the delicate status quo of Al-Aqsa, the third holiest site in Islam and the most holy site in Judaism. Under the rules governing access to Al-Aqsa, which is administered by Jordanian religious authorities, Jews are allowed into the compound but are not permitted to pray. Netanyahu has said Israel has no intentions of altering the status quo, but far-right activists and lawmakers have been pushing for Jewish worship at the site. Israeli police often restrict access to Al-Aqsa when concerned about possible violence there, only letting in women and Muslim men over the age of 40 or 50. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Coinbase also allows you to buy and sell Bitcoin using a bank account or use their tools to accept Bitcoin as a merchant. Opening a wallet is quick and easy, and for merchants, there are no transaction fees on the first million dollars worth of transactions. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. USA Today reports the leader of Boko Haram dashed hopes for the release of 200 kidnapped girls on Saturday, denying reports of a truce with the government. Boko Haram's leader says the schoolgirls have converted to Islam and married off, saying the issue of the girls is long forgotten because I have long ago married them off. 
The news goes counter to what the Nigerian government said nearly two weeks ago when it announced a ceasefire deal with the terrorist organization, raising hopes among the families of the kidnapped girls who were taken from the northeastern Nigerian town of Chabak in April that their daughters would soon be released. But as the weeks dragged on with no sign of the kidnapped girls, hopes began to fade. Human Rights Watch estimates that Boko Haram, whose name loosely translates as Western education is forbidden, has abducted around 500 young young women over the past five years. Altogether, some girls managed to escape, though their whereabouts and the fate of the rest of the young women are uncertain. A recent Human Rights Watch report based on interviews with the victims and witnesses of Boko Haram abductions offer rare insights into a series of physical and sexual abuses the girls suffer in capacity, including rape, forced labor, and beatings. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Captain Actual America is overweight and hopelessly in debt, and the Richie Rich comic strip introduces a new, even gayer character. As if you needed another reason to remain in your isolated and socially degenerative cocoon, this is the Onion Week in Review, Comics Edition. Sources confirmed Tuesday that the comic book and sci-fi expo Comic-Con was once again marred by BullyCon, an increasingly popular event held in the same convention space. Now in its fifth year, BullyCon reportedly drew more than 125,000 tormentors from across the nation, all of whom were bent on beating up and torturing those attending the many comic book, television, and movie panels at Comic-Con. When this got started, it was just a couple of friends who wanted to beat the shit out of some Joss Whedon fans, but now there are thousands of us ruining Walking Dead panels, taunting Harry Potter nerds, and really making some video gamers' lives completely miserable. I don't necessarily need to travel to San Diego to slap a copy of Spider-Man out of some pussy's hands, but there's something really special about coming together with people who dig the same sort of cruelty you do. This is Free Talk Live. Welcome. You're listening to the live Sunday night show. We've had quite an exciting weekend. And uh, we tonight is me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. We just finished the Keenvention, which is a little party slash event that's uh, meant to highlight what it's like to live in Keene, New Hampshire and engage in freedom activism. That was put on by Ian, who's on Free Talk Live the other six nights of the week. And it was a blast. I really had a great time this weekend. So if you uh, are curious about that or you got something else on your mind that you'd like to bring up tonight, Free Talk Live is a show where you can call and bring up any topic that's on your mind, as long as it's radio friendly, of course. The way to do that is call 855-450-3733. That's 855-450-FREE, the word free. One more time, 855-450-3733. Or on Skype, you can call us at lrn.fm. On Skype, those are of course the Pro XPN toll-free call-in lines. Let's. Why don't we start out with, um, I guess, just a quick little announcement before we get into our main story tonight. So last Sunday on our podcast, we put out a, an after show to sort of talk about this in a little more depth. But I just want to let all the radio listeners know who might not have caught that at archives.freetalklive.com. You can hear all our podcasts. But in, in case you didn't tune in last week, Brian and I are actually going to, this is our second to last Sunday show. So we're going to be yes. on next week, but then we're going to be gone and the Sunday show is going to be changing it's still going to be on every Sunday, live radio, but it's not going to have us on it. And, of course, it's it's an amicable breakup. It's just that it's a long trip here, and it's not, you know, really working out for Brian and I in terms of the time to pay ratio. Yeah, you know, yeah. r- radio is not exactly a high-paying uh, field. <laughs> so, you know, we've, we've got day jobs and other stuff to do, so we kind of got to make some changes here. But we have, we have really enjoyed doing Free Talk Live. I've been on the show for the last four years, and I've loved – Every minute of it. So thank you so much for listening. Some people are going to like this. Some people are not going to like it. <laughs> but um, you know, which shows that you're doing it right. Yeah, <laughs> I guess so. So if you if you want to wish us farewell, you're welcome to call it tonight too. But uh, we we'd love to talk to you about topics, just like any other show. Anything that's on your mind. 
And speaking of topics, Mark's got this really interesting story about uh, a protest at the big football. Is it football, Mark? I'm so out of touch with sports. Yes, I don't even this know. is football. Okay, so there's a big football game this weekend. The Washington Redskins versus the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, and that wasn't the big thing about the event. The big thing was is that uh, apparently there was some huge rally out there that uh, was, uh, let's see, it was a tribute to the 11 states, tribes, um, a man in the middle held up a sign painted in bold letters, racist. And I guess they're talking about the Redskins term. And I would agree that the Redskin, the term Redskins, um, the Washington Redskins name, and I, I've really always held this position, is a pejorative term. I mean, it's that's what that yeah. is. Native American people don't. Don't usually call themselves Redskins. Yeah, and if they do, they're um, you know that would they they'd be doing it sort of ironically. Um, you know, it's one of it's a pejorative term, right? I mean, Indian yeah. Redskin. I, that's about all I've got for for Native Americans or whatever term. Mm. I think Native is really difficult this naming thing. I like Indians because that was what I've was sort of taught, um, and many of them call themselves that. But then there's always the problem of like people who are actually from India. India, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's a uh, it, it's it's a funny term. Uh, Native American doesn't really make any sense to me because mm-hmm. it wasn't america anybody born until... here uh, is native to it too right <laughs> yeah. and yeah i guess native people or sometimes they're called first first, first, first people yeah first nations and first people is a is a is a new one and okay but there was all kinds of waves of immigration in into the you know north and the american continents mm-hmm. over time so yeah whatever i guess that kind of singles out europeans and says they're second i don't know but it's always kind of interesting. Oh, I don't care about being second. I mean, I'll call someone whatever they prefer to be called within reason, and my reasonable uh, criteria are, are pretty. It's a pretty wide range of what I would consider reasonable. Yeah, I just want them to feel comfortable, right? So I think that definitely the term Washington Redskins is uh, pejorative. There's no doubt about it. But there's part of a. I, I, uh, it, to me, it's really important when we start looking at issues to not go to an extreme just because another side is at another extreme. I think that there's the the right position, and it is not defined by who's on the other side or what whose position is or whatever. The right sure, position that makes is, sense. You don't want to be reactionary. You want to take a think about it on your own. Yeah. So to me, the irony is is the dem- demonstrators yelled, "Who are we?" Not your mascots. Who are we? Not your mascots. So they're going back and forth. Now, I want you to understand, this is a Washington Redskins game against the Minnesota Vikings. There's a lot of irony in this, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, all isn't, these... <laughs> isn't Vikings potentially uh, along similar lines as... <laughs> Yeah. All these Swedes in Minnesota, <laughs> you know, they decided to pick for themselves the Vikings. And, and I get that, uh, that you know, the Washington Redskins is not uh, populated largely by um, major- majority Native American people. I get it. But if also, we say— Viking, Viking isn't necessarily as pejorative for a Scandinavian person, Right. Redskin is a, is a pejorative term, but yeah. I, well, here's what I'm trying to, to, to parse out. The uh, Seminoles, Florida State Seminoles, are endorsed by the Florida Seminole tribe, Indian tribe. Mm-hmm. And like they say that it's okay if you use our name. I don't imagine they ask them first, just to be clear, mm-hmm. but you know, some group calling themselves the Seminoles, which I'm sure doesn't represent every single Seminoles opinion on this, um, says that it's okay for the Florida State Seminoles to call themselves the Seminoles. Yeah, Fine. That would be almost like having a team named the Florida British or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and so that's fine. So that to me, there's a continuum between Redskin and Seminoles. Mm-hmm. And I like to draw a line. Personally, for me, it's uh, the Cleveland Indians has this this character that is uh, buck-tooth and red-skinned. Um, and mm-hmm. he's... Dartmouth used to have a team called the Indians, too, and I think they changed it to the Big Green or something like that okay. because there was actually some there were actually some incidents where students really got offended by the name the Indians. And there, that is actually an area. The history of Dartmouth is that basically a bunch of Europeans came onto some land that belonged to Abenaki, Abenaki Indians <laughs> and wanted to educate them about Jesus and stuff and yes. Christianity. So they formed this college. And, <laughs> you know, now the Abenaki are pretty much extinct. Yes, they're pretty much gone. There's no doubt about it. The Micmac. Whatever that, whatever was there. Um, so, so what on your continuum? What about the Braves? I kind of feel like the Braves. Now, this is a baseball team, not a uh, football team. Right? Is oh, is an okay term? It's kind of like saying the uh, Vikings. You know, um, it's it's a group of warriors that you respect and you want to give homage to and in some way emulate. 
I don't have a problem with that as long as you don't draw those warriors in a fashion that's insulting. Yeah, um, I mean, that well, I think they do is, have the tomahawk for their symbol, and like the Kansas City Chiefs. Have you ever used a tomahawk? It is an incredibly good weapon, oh. and the Vikings use something very similar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but I mean, then you have the Kansas City Chiefs too. I don't know. There, there's so many of these teams that why, I think the. Why red- are there so many teams named after like? Native Americans. It's America, and there's a lot of respect for the fighting prowess. Uh, there was a general uh, that named is his... Is it respect, though, or is it a stereotype that they're good at sports and good warriors or whatever? I don't know if they... Uh, Joe Thorpe... Uh, Thorpe? Joe Thorpe? Thorpe? Thorpe uh, was uh, certainly excellent at it, but uh, it's not like sports are overpopulated with uh, with Indians. Uh, you know, Well... They're all on reservations. They're not really in. They can around. come play. I mean, there's people coming to this country from South America to play baseball. What, um, what about the Green Bay Packers? Who, who exactly is that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> La- union unionized labor workers. Oh, 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 I was sorry. I was thinking something you were else. Thinking a different kind of <laughs> So, I, like for me, it's about uh, you know a racist term. I don't think that one group should be able to withhold. Uh, their, you know, their symbol for whatever reason it might be their symbol from another, you know, group that they might perceive that way, especially when you consider that the majority of Americans uh, that I've met will claim some uh, Native American heritage. Now, we have found over time that usually they're wrong, but that doesn't that what that speaks to is is a um, is is a solidarity, mm. like a belief well, in or, solidarity or that. Sometimes the government gives money and reparations and land to people who have at least one sixteenth of yep. Native American. But most Americans ancestry. won't want that. They they just want to say I'm Native American because well, it's cool, it's good. But it also, I mean, you could just to play devil's advocate, you could say it absolves them of some responsibility. Why would I, I? I promise you, I have never gone out on a train and shot Indians from a, um, a you know some kind of train car. Yeah, but there's just the the guilt, you know. Of uh, I feel no guilt. <laughs> I don't know. I'm concerned about fans that dress up for this. Uh, Eight. I'm... What do you think? Eight five five four five zero three seven three three. Is this protest appropriate? Are you offended? Let us know what you think. Eight fifty five four fifty three. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power, a gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for under $30,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet under $30,000. Many 
manufacturers. If you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for 129000 You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. Call 800-917-8251. 800-917-8251, 800-917-8251. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Gabino lives in Palcapata, Peru. He buys old appliances like irons, radios, and TV sets, fixes them up, and resells them. He saw an opportunity to expand his business and needed a loan to buy more appliances. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan, and the expansion was a success. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel anytime. Coffee.freetalklive.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday night show. Yep, we're live on Sunday night. It's me, Stephanie, here with you. And Brian. And Mark. 855-450-3733 is the phone number. That's 855-450-FREE. You can call and bring up anything that's on your mind. One more time, 855-450-3733. Or you can call us on Skype at lrn.fm. You know, uh, at Keenvention today, actually, uh, you had a Bitcoin panel. I had a tech panel, and definitely That's one right. of the uh, one of the big topics was about privacy. You know, and for activists and what they can do uh, in New Hampshire in particular. But boy, if you're looking to figure out how to get privacy for around the world, really big picture stuff uh, in in the tech realm, you want to go to this event. It's Hack the Trackers. And you go to hackthetrackers.com to get more information about it. Particip- participation is totally free. Registration is open now. It is happening next weekend, November 7th and the 8th. It's going to be coders, privacy specialists, idea people, all stripes will join together for the event. Uh, and it's all about transparency and privacy in New York City is where they'll be holding it. It's going to be a fantastic event. I am sure of it. It's being held by Ghostery. Uh, which is, boy, if you want a great extension to start getting your privacy back, get get Ghostry installed on Firefox or Chrome or whichever. Uh, and also DuckDuckGo and some other uh, great, uh, you know, great sponsors. So and we're happy to be announcing about this on Free Talk Live, awesome. certainly. So hackthetrackers.com to find out more about that. We could actually go to that, Brian. I don't know if any of our listeners are planning on attending. They can drop you an email, perhaps, Brian, at freetalklive.com. Brian, sure. Brian, with an I. I'll be coming back uh, through New York City on that very day. As a matter of fact, I'm coming from the Cato Monetary event. Uh, oh, yeah? Back, uh, yeah. Cool. So it should be fun. Freedom everywhere. I love it. Yeah, I love how many events there are because, I don't know, just getting a chance at Keenvention this weekend to meet some of the people who listen to the show. Like, there were a couple people who introduced themselves to me, and I never knew who they were, but they said, oh, I've been listening to you on Free Talk Live, and I love your shows, and uh, that was just really cool um heartwarming i had no idea they were out there so if you're out there listening thank you and enough of that mushy stuff let's get to patrick in virginia hi patrick you're on free talk live what's on your mind tonight good evening to you all uh well i don't know uh nasa i want to talk a little bit about nasa uh okay this past this past week the wall of silence they set off a rocket that was you know, it's supposed to go to the International Space Center for supplies and stuff like that. And uh, six seconds after the launch, it, it exploded. Well, and was that a NASA that. rocket? I heard something about Virgin Galactic. Well, there was a NASA a rocket and a Virgin Galas- Galactic yeah. uh, spacecraft. Yeah, okay, yeah. so they both had yeah. malfunctions? Well, the one rocket was intended to go to the space station. The uh, The other one was just a tester. And, you know, I mean, I guess, you know, some, some yeah. rockets have to blow yeah. up and test. Yeah, it was uh, an Antares rocket. That's correct. 
Okay, so I heard in the news, I heard a lot about the Virgin Galactic one, and it was almost like this triumphant, see, you can't do private space travel, their rockets blow up. I heard nothing about the NASA one. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it happened over here on Wallops Island, and now Wallops Island is quite a way from where I'm at. That's a Wallops flight in Virginia. Thank you. Yeah, I came came outside. That's over on the eastern shore. I'm here in Norfolk, and man. That, uh, I caught a whiff of that fuel and all that stuff. Wow. That something. Wow. What does the fuel yeah. smell like? Burned oh, stuff? Man. It's worse than these Navy planes flying by. Yikes. Oh. Uh, They're everywhere. Yeah, every, 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 it kind of, has kind of like a sulfur smell to it. Yikes. Thanks for the call, Pat. I appreciate your thoughts tonight. Did you guys uh, have any comments about the NASA versus... Virgin Galactic. I, the only story in there for me was the fact that I just heard so many people kind of gleefully announcing the malfunction of the of the spaceship two, whereas it didn't hear anything about NASA. I, I've heard both. Certainly, the spaceship two is bigger news. It should be bigger news because the the existence of commercial space travel is a bigger deal. I um, if you compare commercial space travels uh, foibles to government uh, space travels foibles you will see that government took a much long has a much longer learning curve but i don't think it's really fair to compare them because well because all the successes that governments had the commercial folks can build off of yeah the, t- to me what the biggest problem is is that for a very long time nasa was protected by laws that said that it is illegal for people who aren't the government to try to go to space like the post office you yep. can't start your own competing mail service under a dollar, right? Nothing first class mail. Right, first class class mail, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's get back into this story about the protest. In case you're just joining us in the first segment of tonight's show, we were covering um th- the game between the Redskins and the Vikings, the Washington Redskins and Minnesota Vikings. People were protesting the name Redskins. And it's a really interesting issue, but first we actually do have a call coming in on Skype, so let's go to the calls. This is Free Talk Live and we love your calls, especially when Jimmy calls. Hey, Jimmy, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, how are you <laughs> doing? great, Jimmy. Good, good to hear from Hello? you. Can you hear us? Yeah, I know I can. Uh, how y'all doing? Great. Good to, good to hear from you, Jimmy. What's on your mind? Well, uh, I got a problem. Man, I got a question at the end. Or, okay. Uh, yeah, well, so what happened was I, uh, I lost my job. And I'm trying to tell everybody they need to boycott Walmart. You, you were working at Walmart. You got laid off. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Well, let me. I'll tell you. It's they. They fired me for doing my job. They they fired me for doing the job they hired me to do. And well, I'm upset. And what was that? Well, I saw an ad in the paper, uh, you know, and they were hurting for people and said they needed an, an, uh, a night stalker. So. Uh, oh no. Yeah, you know what I mean. I I knew exactly <laughs> what they needed. And so I got hired on there, and I mean, I stalked everybody that worked at that store. And, uh, <laughs> Were you getting paid? God. Did you get your first paycheck yet? <laughs> no, they wouldn't even pay me. You know, in fact, they called the police on me. Wow, <laughs> what a crime! Yeah. So, are you going to go that. on? Are you going to file for unemployment, Jimmy? Well, here's the thing. Uh, I heard there was an opening up there, and, and I'm just going to tell Mark. I want to tell the whole world. Yes. Yes, Mark, I will be your Sunday night co-host. <laughs> oh, thank goodness we found a replacement. Uh, Jimmy, I, thank you for your service. I'm sure no, you're going to be a great stalker here on Free Talk Live as well. Thanks for the call tonight, so, Jimmy. <laughs> I tell you, when you hire, you got to get top men, and Jimmy is a top man. He is that's a top, for sure. top dog. I get the impression nobody can replace that guy when it comes to stalking. You're, you're going to have such a fun time doing the show with Jimmy, Mark. Just a few more weeks, the world will not have, not have to wait any longer. So, okay, let's get back into this uh, protest about the Washington Redskins. The thing that I really want to know, and if you have comments on this, 855-450-3733 or on Skype, lrn.fm. Um, the thing that I really want to know is like, yeah, you can have team names that are the Seminoles or the Braves or perhaps even the Redskins or the Indians. Uh, how much of that is accompanied by like characters, like cartoon caricatures of Native Americans with like 
big teeth and a tomahawk and red skin and a big feathered headdress and just really stereotypical, like offensive kind of caricatures of the of the characters. I mean, because the people in this protest were saying we're not your mascot. So what was the mascot actually like? I don't watch these sports games. So. The Redskins. Um, yeah. I mean, I. I I don't know what they're the guy that runs around on the fields like, but I don't need to know anything more than red skins. Like that's enough for me. Um, like all I need to see is one insulting thing. What do you think? Eight fifty five, four fifty free. This is Free Talk Live, the Sunday show. Are you ready to surrender your right to buy body armor? No joke. Congress is now trying to outlaw civilian body armor. And if House Bill H.R. 5344 becomes law, you can kiss your right to protect yourself against rifle bullets goodbye. Don't put off your body armor purchase any longer. Go now to InfidelBodyArmor.com. Thousands of military veterans trust their lives to Infidel Body Armor. You should too. Spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L. Infidel Body Armor. Just won't quit. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at FFF at FFF.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's FFF at FFF.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on joined the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM.
This is Free Talk Live, the live Sunday night show with me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. (laughs) He had to do the reach around to get his microphone. (laughs) 855-450-3733 is our phone number in case you have comments about the protest that happened at the Washington Redskins versus Minnesota Vikings game. Is Vikings racist? Is Redskins racist? Let us know what you think. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733, the Pro-XPN toll-free call-in lines. Of course, you can visit our website at freetalklive.com, where you can find archives of our show at archives.freetalklive.com. Let's go to the phones, unless, Mark, you have some... No, no, go ahead. Okay, (laughs) let's go to David in Arkansas. Hi, David, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Hey, Hey, how are you doing? Doing great tonight. I all right, good deal. I'm a 53 year old man, and you know, <clears throat> I was thinking about when I was just a really young kid. We were always taught that you know that old saying, uh, "Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words would never hurt me." You know. <laughs> yeah. You know, and the Washington Redskins has had their name since what? What was it? 1930 or 1935 or what it is? Whatever. It's been a while. I'll that's trust for you sure. on that. I'm not familiar with the yeah. history. Yeah, something like I think it's like the 1930s. Well, you know, I look at it this way. It is just a name of a football team. It's not like they're making fun of them. And, you know, for crying out loud, when are we adults going to grow up and realize it's just the name of a football team? But is it, Can it go too I far? Would... Is it possible for uh, it to sir? go too far? What if they do have a mascot that is, like, caricaturing – we actually looked during the break, and we saw a guy with a like a head a feathered headdress that was running around, and he had some makeup on his face. It looked like too. So, is that well, too far? No, uh, no, ma'am. Let me um, let me just put this thought across to you just real quick. I was born with a birth defect where I've been teased my entire life, and if I hated everybody that ever said anything to me or looked at me funny, I would hate the whole world. And I have just decided, you know, um, um, you know, it ain't worth it. You know, get over it. You know, it is. Don't go around with a chip on your shoulder. You know, yeah. and it's not that I don't uh, agree with like, you. That that like I get where you know? you're coming from. The attitude's really important, and you've got the right attitude. Yeah, it sounds like a very empowered attitude. And, and I want to uh, commend you for that. But at the same time, if somebody decides to create the uh, you know the football team, the New Hampshire, the Manchester uh, retards, I'm not going to stand by and say that that's okay because well, it's but wait a, minute. That's a different. pejorative term. That's, that's the one that has a actual physical problems with an Indian. They're not making them look stupid. They're not making them look like a retard. But red kin, like redskins is uh, is a pejorative term, right? You'd agree with that? Okay, but but hey, I'm a redheaded man, yep. right? I am a very white, very white dude. I don't tan, and I have had people say stuff about us redheaded people. So, but but here you again, have no that souls, was, <laughs> gingers, <but that laughs> gingers. Was, but, thank you. <laughs> but that was actually aimed at me personally. Mm-hmm. This is not aimed at the at the Indians. It is for crying out loud, it is a football team name. <laughs> so we should all just get over it. Yeah. Thanks, David, for your perspective. Yeah, get thanks. Over it. Thanks I mean, for your perspective. Really. I really like that attitude of you don't have to give people the power to offend you, right? Well, you know, I mean, there's something to be said for that. I, I hear it, and I, I, you know, the the guy's clearly empowered by it, and I don't want to take one bit of that part away. But if they want to call, um, you know, the the Compton Honkies, I'm not going to sit by for that one either. I mean, if you, you know, it's just, it, yeah, it's I, I just I don't want people to feel bad, right? Like some percentage of people are going to hear a name like that and feel offended. Well, somebody's and- going to feel bad about everything, um, yeah. and that's the thing that I'm not willing to go ahead and, and you know, if, if somebody's upset about the Redskins, then somebody else is going to be upset about the Vikings. Yeah. You know, somebody from of Swedish ancestry is going to say, I, I just can't live with this, you know? Well, well, I don't feel hurt in any way. Like, it doesn't cost me anything to avoid using certain racial terms or whatever. So I'm okay. perfectly happy not saying certain words. Yeah, that's all fine and dandy, but I think... What worries me is especially like fans that are in this on the side, you know, in in the the auditorium, whatever bleachers. You know, bleachers, yeah, take your pick of of whatever you know stadium you happen to be in, uh, dressing up 
you know, and like really like fully acting out like these characters, you know, white guys playing, you know, Native Americans, First Nations, whatever you want to use. OK. And my concern here is, is a lack of sensitivity to history, because if you don't, if those who don't know history are destined to repeat it. And I think it is disgustingly insensitive. To treat something that was so deadly serious to people who got murdered and, and, and butchered, uh, you know, by, uh, honestly, by a bunch of white guys, uh, you know, however, 100 years ago, 150 years yeah, ago, it's a pick, brutal pick your time frame, and to somehow treat that as like, oh, yeah, this can be used to represent a cute thing in a sport, uh, I find to be pretty reprehensible. And it's not just insulting to, to Native Americans. Forget that. It's insulting to you. Because clearly you wouldn't have a problem with the Georgia slave masters and you would walk around with shackles and, you know, whip stuffs on, on your back because it's just as bad, you, you know, in my opinion. Uh, I, I, I think this is, it, it shows uh, a lack of intelligence on a person. Uh, you, you know, I, I really I, I think this is it's not something fine. Get over it. Sure. But then let's have some actual. I'll get over it when I see people have an understanding of what exactly they're doing. Otherwise, all I'm seeing is rampant insensitivity and, frankly, stupidity. <laughs> Perhaps um, ignorance about history. But let's see what John thinks in New Jersey here. And hold that thought, Mark. John in New Jersey, you're on Free Talk Live. Hello. Um, I'm generally conservative, maybe leaning independent. This is one controversy that I... Um, I'm opposite. Um, I think if it was any other ethnic slur, the name would have been changed a long time ago. Mm. Uh, Being that the American Indians are a less powerful, less vocal minority. There aren't many of them left. uh, Huh? There aren't many of them left to oppose it. I mean, they've definitely been marginalized, but they're just not many. More powerful, more vocal minority. There would have been a problem a lot sooner, I think. Yeah. Um, I just think that uh, it was just a bad choice of name. And maybe back a long time ago, who cared? <laughs> you know, but um, I just think it's a bad choice. You know, I, <laughs> yeah. if it was some other ethnic slur, it wouldn't have lasted this long. Yeah, you know? I hear you, John. Yeah. You Thanks got any other thoughts uh, tonight. Do you, do you oh, have my. any other uh, ideas for, for names for the Redskins? Um. Well, I don't really follow sports, but um, cheers. Right on. <laughs> you know that much. I mean, uh, real kind of on a surface. I don't really get into the various teams, and I'm not a fanatic, you know, about it. But um, no, I think. And but uh, let me say another thing is I have, I don't think the federal government has any place in this. I think the fans, the team, the management, and will decide this, and I don't think the federal government has any place in this whatsoever. I'm with you. Thank you for your call, John. Yeah, I mean... Of course, unfortunately, the government does subsidize a lot of these sports teams, and the NFL is a 501c3 nonprofit. Amazingly. And they also enforce copyright on their merchandise uh, on other people who try to basically ape it and make copies of jerseys that they would then sell. And, uh, yeah, the NFL is a giant... (laughs) huge organization doesn't doesn't pay taxes yeah and it doesn't take a protest for a team to change their names the oilers became the texans uh i mean there's there's plenty or actually they became the ravens and then a new team came in called the texans uh but regardless the point is is that you can change your name you know it's it's no big deal and it doesn't require a protest but if there is a protest yeah, come on, <laughs> you know, yeah. take it into consideration. It'd be a great boon to saying yes, we listen to you. And the claim is, is that also the um, uh, that it, you know the the gear would be marginalized or whatever. People have bought a lot of Redskins stuff. Well, it would be a collector's item. This is what happened in Tampa Bay when we switched from the 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 cream sickles over to uh, pewter and red. Seriously, they were called the cream sickles. No, that's what they looked like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in the in the seventies, they decided oh, the Buccaneers. White it yeah. would be a good color for the Buccaneers, and they had <laughs> Bruce the Buccaneer with like a knife in his teeth, a very rakish-looking <laughs> fellow with a with an ostrich plume, and and I'm I'm offended that he used an ostrich plume too. <laughs> Suggestions for names for the Washington Redskins: eight fifty five four fifty free. This is Free Talk Live, the Sunday Show. More coming up. Geico RV presents Reflections from the Road. I love the great outdoors and saving money, so I made the easy switch to Geico RV insurance which was a whole lot easier than eating my wife's cooking for a week. Rob, I can hear you. 
Sometimes I think she can read my thoughts. Yeah, you were thinking about Geico RV insurance. Man, she's good. Well, you are saying everything out loud. <sighs> I meant to do an internal monologue. Geico, for your RV, trailer, or camper. See how much you could save. Majid lives in Nord Devin, Armenia, with his wife, kids, and grandkids, all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. You pick up the receiver with your heart racing and sweat dripping from your forehead. You finally muster the courage to dial the number to call into your favorite talk radio show. It rings once, twice, and then... Hello, it's GCN. What's your name and the state you're calling from? Surprised you got through, you squeak out. Jason from Minnesota. Please hold. As you patiently wait for your turn, you begin to daydream about being a famous talk radio host and what it would be like to have your own show. Jason from Minnesota, you're up. Millions of loyal listeners worldwide waiting to call and talk to you. You. Caller, are you there? Cheering crowds surround you, calling out your name. Jason! Jason! Going once, twice. Okay, we gotta move on to the next caller. You blew it. Huh? Wait, no! Interact with the hosts you're listening to right now online at GCNlive.com. Click on the community link. Engage with other listeners. Ask questions. Start debates. Don't agree with the host? Let them know. Be a part of the community at GCNlive.com. It's The Onion Radio News. General Motors reports record sales of its new disposable car. This is Doyle Redland reporting. General Motors has announced a 56% increase in earnings this year, attributing much of it to February's wildly successful launch of the GMC Whim, the first-ever non-refillable disposable automobile. Debuting at a cost of $1,100 each, the vehicles are flying out of showrooms as quickly as dealers can stock them. Whim enthusiast Glenn Shriver. I recently consumed four vehicles driving from my home to Daytona Beach for the first annual Whim Owners Convention. I've already collected all eight colors. Rival automakers are preparing to counter with their own lines of disposable cars, including the Ford Temporaire and the Chrysler Dumper. The 2002 Mitsubishi Ditch will be unveiled later this year with a projected sticker price of $799. Royal Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 9938 while our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday night show. It's me, Stephanie, here. And Brian. And Mark. 855-450-3733. That's our phone number tonight where you can call and bring up anything that's on your mind. 855-450-FREE. One more time, 855-450-3733. Or on Skype, lrn.fm. And of course, those are the pro-XPN toll-free call-in lines sponsored by our favorite VPN provider here at Free Talk Live. Which is pro-XPN. And believe me, you want a VPN if you care about your online privacy. Uh, VPN is a virtual private network 
Okay, and what that'll do is you download some software onto your tablet, your smartphone, Windows, Linux, OS X. You take your pick of the uh, really of, of the operating system, and that software will encrypt all of your data client side. That means it's being done on the hardware itself, which is where you want it done. Yeah, it's the only place you want it done. That's right. Every time, you, you know, <laughs> yes. that's the only way you know the encryption is solid as a rock. And uh, and this is solid as a rock. Encryption it uses OpenVPN, which has been checked by the geeks back and forth six ways to Sunday which is today. but <laughs> So you want to get a VPN, uh, believe me, because, I mean, there's ISPs are keeping some of your data for up to five years, and this is encrypting the information before it gets to the ISPs. And who can get that information? Not just the NSA, not just, you know, alphabet soup, whatever, but your employers, your future employers could get that. You need to take your privacy seriously. All right, in this world today. And so if you want to do that, step one, and I mean it, this is step number one. And it's so inexpensive, especially with an annual plan. If you use the code FTL50, it'll end up costing you less than a cup of coffee a month. Or if you go with FTL BTC because you want to spend Bitcoin because they love Bitcoin at ProXPN, uh, you can do it that way too. But you want to do this. This is step one, and it's cheap. Go for it. Get a VPN. Get it running on your machine, whatever you've got going, on your smartphone, tablet, PC, whatever, ProXPN.com. All right. Thank you so much. Let's go to the phones and talk to Brian in Iowa. Hi, Brian. You're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Oh, I was just listening to you guys talk. Um, I am native. I am an ape. I have family that live on Standing Rock Indian Reservation mm -hmm. in South Dakota. Um, and it is pretty disturbing to see people walking around with, with headdresses. You know, those things are our ceremonial uses, you know, everything means something to us. Sure. You know, we, feathers represent, certain feathers represent certain things. Eagle feathers represent certain things. Every animal represents a certain thing, you know. Um, and not, and my, not all Native American tribes use feathered headdresses either, right? There's a huge diversity of, of different traditions. Right. Right, and not every one of them. You know, there used to be 500 known native tribes in America. The government only officially classifies 250 of them. Mm. Let me um, ask you this, because I think that there's a continuum here, and I want to sort of find out where it is for you. Now, um, if a on a reservation a team of uh, Indian kids wants to uh, – you know, put together a, a a team. Maybe they already have one. Chances are good they're going to call themselves the Braves or the Indians or something like that. Well, like, I, I think I saw some study on this, and the the numbers are like outlandish as to uh, how much they use sort of Native American uh, terminology. It's okay for them to do it, right? Right. It's okay. No wait, 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 wait. Other... I've got more questions. Um, so. The University of Florida, uh, State, Florida State, excuse me, Florida State University, has the Seminoles, which is uh, endorsed by the F Florida Seminole Indian Tribe, some ruling organization there of some people who claim to be Seminoles. Certainly not every Seminole Indian, but some of them. Is that okay? Because they have a little guy who runs around with feathers and stuff too. <laughs> right, right. Um, to me, if if the tribe endorses it then it would be perfectly fine with me because not only they're using a actual name right. of the tribe, they're not using the skin color. They're not using the, the character or something like that. You know, it's no different. Like, like we're Dakota. Um, and then there's Lakota and Nakota. Oh, so so there's a Dakota and a be... Lakota? Yes. I thought yes. Okay, great. I'm glad somebody finally told me because I thought it was the same thing. Um, so well, Because they're all three out of the same. It's called the three three nations of Lakota, Dakota, and Nakota. They're all, they're all in the same area, um, but they're all different. They represent all different. Thanks. Now, um, now, what what you're talking about here is some ruling organization of Seminoles. Certainly, not every Seminole. So, I know that there are other Seminole groups, and at any point, you can just sort of, as you know, a Native American, you can just sort of claim that I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm my own tribe of this, and then you can have some different name that includes Dakota in the name, and so you'll have these several organizations that represent the same folks and some of them will agree and some of them will disagree so i remember the uh 
I the Fighting Illini uh, out of Illinois, and they had this uh, chief with um, the the big headdress or whatever, and they got rid of that because some group didn't like it. Um, so if the whatever whatever organization claims they don't like you using their name, and then you can't use it because that re even because it represents a singular group at that point. Right. Like I said, those headdresses are, are for, you know, they represent somebody of high art anarchy, you know, their status symbol. Um, you know, it just, those are the type, we're not a, we're not a bad people like everybody thinks we are. We're, we're not savages like everybody thinks we are. People think that? You know? Well, oh, I, yeah, I, I, I think, think that it gets I, taught. Yeah. Or at I, least I, it used to. That, I've been called that many a times by people. You're, oh, you come from a family of savages? Uh, huh. You're an engine. You're you're you're. All you people want to do is kill everybody. Uh, you know. Wow, and isn't well, that the pot calling the kettle black? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, because these sport team names generally come out of the same time. Where if you watch the entertainment of the day, I mean, in you know, Native Americans are always the villains, uh, and like pejoratives are used right and left, as well as collectivizing. Uh, you know, uh, tropes are being used yeah, constantly the on Ranger. them. Yeah, yeah. and, and well, my, sure. I I I I teach my daughter. Just about everything. As a matter of fact, I just, not even that long ago, I just got called to the office because I told my daughter not to celebrate Columbus Day. And she refused to do anything on Columbus Day. And they called me to the office, told me that she needed to participate in everything. And yeah. I was like, no. Wow, that's yeah. offensive. Um, but Brian, I want to just um, bring you back, back on track real quick. I think Mark was asking, do you see the the problem, I guess, with democracy here? Like, if the quote the Seminoles in, endorse the team calling themselves the Seminoles, obviously there are some people who are included in the Seminole tribe who may not agree with that decision. What about them? And and you know they have the right to speak their mind on that, but that's the problem is is that if the tribal council has has already agreed on to allow that to happen, then they need to take it upon the tribal council and tell them look. This isn't right. We don't want them using our name. We're not a sports figure. Mm. Thank you for the call you know, tonight, Brian. I, I uh, pretty, really appreciate hearing your perspective as someone who actually just, relates just to this. Thing, right? yep. One more thing, right quick. Um, just like there's no such thing as, as Sue. Sue was a name given. And and the Lakota, because you got the, they call themselves Sue Lakotas, Sue Dakotas, Sue Nakotas. All that. There's seven different nations of Sioux, but they had to fight. Some of them had to fight to get their name back, and and the proper name is Lakota, Dakota, Thanks. not Sioux. Thanks for the call, Brian. I appreciate your thoughts. Yeah, that's an interesting point to bring up because, and and that's really it. It's like just leave this stuff to the people that it really matters to. Mm. You know. And so uh, I I didn't mean to insinuate that all tribes have a de democratic governance system or anything like that. Some of them use consensus to make decisions, which means everybody has to agree or nothing. Sure, gets right. Done, right. But right? this doesn't work. Okay, what you're talking about doesn't work. Okay, because what you're saying is is that we need to get rid of the Vikings. Consider for a second that there are a lot of black people on the Minnesota Vikings uh, football team. Sure. Not Vikings, right? Right. <laughs> this is not a team of Swedes. Right. And so, it, it, like, I think things should be fair, and we should try to pretend like things are just and that's the best we can do you don't want to give okay well the indians had it really rough and mind you i'm just a little bit uh, native american i don't know that that matters in any way shape or form i mm -hmm. certainly wasn't raised on a reservation but um i mean i don't i i wouldn't i wouldn't want a anything given to me simply because of the a drop of blood that i might uh, possess i mean that just seems like a silly reason to to do something sure well <sighs> Yeah, I, I hear your point. I mean, this is interesting because I know down south that uh, at, at a certain percentage of Native American heritage, you can get some odd 50 acres of, of land or something. Never heard know, of that. Totally for free. It happened uh, to one of my uncles by marriage, actually. Like, sure. I, I don't have Native American heritage, but he did, and he, he was able to prove he was an eighth Seminole or something like that, and he got land in Florida. Mm. Yeah, I, I think there's more to Florida say about this, stinks. but... <laughs> Probably, yeah. It's it's a meager bone to throw to him for all the history of persecution. But yeah, then again, it wasn't him who was persecuted. Right. So, 855 450 free. Pop quiz, kid. You know it's at 3221 Highway 22? The new Dickinson Granger branch. You know it was there before that? 
Who cares? There's a Granger branch there now. Granger's got everything we need, from inventory management to safety services and solutions. They even have this handy mobile app for easy browsing on the go. Let's head over there and stock up. There's nothing I love more than a new Granger branch, kid, including you. Get it? Got it? Good. Call clickgranger.com slash oil and gas or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Talk radio generally and Free Talk Live specifically are a really inexpensive way to reach customers. All advertising is about return on investment. If you keep your investment low, you have a better chance of seeing a proper return. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations and the internet, reaching hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, October 31st, 2014. Happy Halloween. Gold is trading around $1,201, silver at $16.59, and Bitcoin trading around $344. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. In the news, a federal judge has ruled that a couple may pursue their lawsuit against a California police officer who killed their dog during a police visit to their home. Erica Gregory and Lauren Molner say that an officer was sent to their home to speak about an ongoing fraud investigation. Officer Chase Calhoun stated that when he entered the couple's yard and walked toward the front door, he saw their two dogs coming towards him and believed he was going to be attacked. The officer fired two rounds and killed one of the dogs. A prisoner whose confession helped free a death row inmate in a case that was instrumental to ending capital punishment in Illinois was released Thursday after he recanted. And a prosecutor said there was powerful evidence that the other man was responsible. All Story Simon's confession gained international attention in 1999, largely due to an investigation by a journalism professor and a team of students from Northwestern University that helped secure Anthony Porter's release just days before he was to be executed. He had spent 16 years on death row for slayings that he and his supporters maintained he did not commit. The Madison Water Utility Board affirmed its support for keeping fluoride in the city's water supply Tuesday night, approving a slightly tweaked policy after a review process. The board endorsed the policy in a 4-to-1 vote, according to spokeswoman Amy Barillow, After a lengthy public comment period that included supporters and opponents of fluoridation, they moved ahead with that endorsement. Madison has had fluoride in its water since 1948. A June report by Public Health Madison and Dane County said fluoridation helps promote oral health by preventing tooth decay, especially among poor residents. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Margie Wildcraft's Grow Your Own Groceries, homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. Support also comes from Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, October 31st, 2014. 
Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelibertybeat. On Wednesday, prosecutors charged a Baltimore police officer with assault and perjury after the officer was caught on camera beating someone and lying about it. Officer Vincent E. Cosum Jr. was seen on a surveillance camera attacking Colin Truss at a bus stop. Cosum originally lied and said Truss assaulted him and he defended himself. The video proved the officer was lying and all charges against Truss were dropped. Cosum was charged with perjury for providing a false statement as well as second-degree assault. The verdict comes as the Department of Justice has announced they are launching an investigation into brutality from the BPD. Ride-sharing service Lyft has stated that the company will leave Houston if a recently passed ordinance. Ride-sharing service Lyft has stated that the company will leave Houston, Texas if a recently passed ordinance does not change. The company is opposed to the ordinance's requirements for fingerprinting drivers, government drug tests, medical exams, and other inconvenient in-person processes. A statement from Lyft called the City of Houston's licensing scheme onerous and incompatible with our peer-to-peer -peer model. The ordinance was passed in an attempt to legalize ride-sharing services such as Uber and Lyft. Instead, the ride-sharing companies feel as if they're being forced to operate under a licensing system similar to taxis. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Sovereign Living, a podcast, blog, and reality show about what it takes to live a voluntary and natural life. Check out the blog at SovereignLiving.com and watch episode one of the soon-to-be-released reality show at SovereignLiving.tv. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, October 31st, 2014. We hope you have a very safe and happy Halloween. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagen reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Like most married couples, Dale and Barbara Patterson like to shake things up from time to time. The couple of 12 years says they've been able to keep their relationship spontaneous and interesting by bickering in all sorts of different positions and even different rooms. There was a while there when our petty nitpicking got pretty predictable. Dale would finish harping on some stupid bullshit first, and before I had time to get a word in, he would just let out a groan, roll over, and fall asleep. Now he really takes his time ripping me a new one over every little thing. Yeah, we'll just pounce on each other the second we get home from work in the evening. <laughs> and then just go right back at it in the morning. I mean, sometimes we'll look at each other directly in the eyes when we're having an argument. Other times she turns her back on me and I just scream at her from behind. We're not exactly shy about doing it in public anymore. Dale gets pretty worked up when there are people around who could be watching or listening. I still can't believe you forgot. Not it. now. Oh, come on. I said not now. Oh, what? don't even. Don't even what? I asked. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday night show. Tonight, it's me, Stephanie, here. And Brian. And Mark. We're starting off the second hour of tonight's program. You can catch Free Talk Live live seven nights a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time. You can always go to listen.freetalklive.com, which is our, our website, freetalklive.com, and find all the different ways to listen to the show, from radio stations to online streams, even our studio cam where you can uh, watch the show, the video feed of our show, and chat with other listeners. So one more time, that's at listen.freetalklive.com. And of course, Free Talk Live is a show where you can call about anything that's on your mind. You want to talk about the um, the name of the team, the Washington Redskins. That's what we talked about the first hour of tonight's show or bring up a totally new topic. I know we still got to get to uh, this catcalling video that <laughs> Mark wanted to talk to me about. Uh, you can bring up that or anything else that you're thinking about at 855-450-3733 and have a discussion with us about it. 855-450-FREE. One more time, that's 855-450-3733. All right, we do have a call on the line. Let's talk to Carl in New Jersey. Hey, Carl, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Well, I wanted to bring up, the, I heard you last night about third parties, and I remember when Ross Perot ran, and I was for him. He's a, he's a very wealthy man, and he pretty much was financing himself. And I think he was going to win, and he dropped out. And and what, I kind of remember he dropped out because he said Bush Sr. was going to ruin his daughter's wedding. If that's going from memory, and I'm thinking, what? 
kind yeah. of nonsense is that? Yeah, there was some. Or... Yeah, there there were some degree in in how many of these were real or true or what. Uh, it's kind of tough to tell, but there were threats against Ross Perot's family. Uh, pretty heavy. I don't know that it's to say but it was Bush. Doesn't that kind of come standard if you run for president? Yeah, but this get... was seemed a lot heavier oh, because absolutely. you know he. I mean, admittedly, like I was pretty young. I know when Ross Perot was yeah, me was too. Running. I was like right, but I mean, 10. he was he was buying like major network uh, airtime, and he was getting really good percentages in the polls. I mean, he was. Yeah. I think not that I care anything for politics, but I think it, he was a serious. Contender. Yeah, until uh, he dropped out. Until he dropped out. And I think that the fact right. that he did drop out is, I mean, that's that's sketchy on its own. Not sketchy right. on his part, but right. who, who He said he saw ninjas, him? which uh, was really sort of the most disturbing part of that for Sure. Me. Yeah. Oh, I don't remember that. Well, the powers I, that be I, I, certainly wouldn't want a third party to run, right? right. I mean, the one thing, well. Right. What's a ninja think, but a guy in a balaclava, right? I think the Republicans and Democrats <laughs> actually agree on a lot more than they claim to. They kind of create this war against each other, but they really are on the same page about a lot of stuff. At, just look at the policies of George W. Bush and Obama to confirm that. But one thing they definitely right. agree on is that they don't want third parties interfering with their party. They don't want them, they want, they don't want them to crash the, uh, the celebration so to speak so yeah i mean and the only real criticism that they had against perot was that his foreign policy stunk and you think about it now and you're like well that's a that's the guy we want someone who has no interest in foreign right. policy whatsoever yes you know like that guy Please. uh yeah so it's interesting though how that's turned right because both sides republicans and democrats need to know what needs to be done they won't do it they absolutely won't do it because they what, don't want to. What do you think needs voters. to be done? Oh, man, well, you you don't agree with me, so I, I I'm not even going to bring it up. Well, we can talk yeah, about I, it if I, you want to. I'm just curious. Well, I, I see, haven't heard you before. See, I, I, I'm, I'm t- no, I've been. I call every once in a while. But what, what I'm going to say is, I'm, I'm against open borders, and you, and you you and you folks are for it, and you're saying we're not for the free stuff. But the whole thing is, they get the free stuff. That's the whole problem. We can't. And you say, well, we got to stop giving them the free. We got to stop giving everybody free stuff, but we don't. And we well, can't afford to give this free stuff all the time. I agree with that completely. But do you you, you do right. understand that it's it's a fantasy world to imagine that the government's going to close the borders. And it's a fantasy right. world to imagine that the government's going to stop giving away free stuff. So this is us arguing right. about which fantasies we believe is more likely. <laughs> um, and right. I, no, right. I don't know yeah, the answer. I, know. I, I, don't, I, I don't either. And, uh, you know, because, you know, really... The people south of the border, there are they're the businesses new slaves, if you want to call it. That. Sure, with the uh, with the yeah. way that illegal immigration right. sort of works, essentially they become serfs to uh, business yes. because they can't leave. The, the exactly. business will just say, "Look, right. we can turn you over to ICE yeah, if you're they're holding if that. Over you don't like heads. getting paid two dollars an hour. Fine, we'll turn you over to ICE." So the current system right. is working for for them. They love that the the slave masters or the neo slave masters like that. They don't have right. any incentive to want that to change, right? Right. And then the president says, we got to get raised to minimum wage. And I'm thinking, what? What are you talking about? you got people here that are, aren't on the book, say, and yet you're saying we got to raise the minimum wage. And it's like, w- which way do you want it, you know? Get ready for $20 hamburgers if we raise that minimum yeah. wage. And thanks for the call, yeah. Carl. Get ready for uh, video cashiers. Yeah. Um, is really what uh, more likely to happen. Yeah, and robotic sandwich makers. Now, but, um, They've already got the robotic sandwich makers. It true. can happen anytime. They're almost as fast as I was. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I saw, I I don't look at political, I, I do my best to avoid them, but they're almost kind of unavoidable. Today I was browsing some website or something and I saw a political attack ad that said, so-and-so candidate has very weird ideas. She opposes background checks to get jobs and she doesn't want to raise the minimum wage. And so I didn't see the part that said she has weird ideas. I just saw the part that said she opposes background checks and she doesn't want to raise the minimum wage. And I was like, like I'm wow, not running. That's pretty good. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what this person's all about. Yeah, well, so. You know, that was interesting because if, as, if my memory serves, Ross Perot was not getting into the muckraking. He would get on. I remember watching some of his specials, you know, that he bought the time for and 
and he just said, "We this is the problem. We're going to pay this much. We're going to do this. We'll allocate this here. Like he had these charts and everything. It was phenomenal to see, even as he, a young person. Uh, and that's something, too, to like imagine a politician that doesn't get into, into muckraking. I mean, like even I remember uh, – uh, what's his name there? A guy can't raise his arms. Uh, McCain? Yes, thank you. McCain, he he said he wasn't going to get into that. Of course, then towards oh, the end of it, he totally yeah. got into he it. He kind of had to, though. I mean, like it was getting there. Well, that, the problem with dirty campaigning is is that it works. Yeah, sure, but I think Perot showed that actually if you just give people solutions, you don't have to do the muckraking. Not everybody's Ross Perot. That's um, a fact. And I'm interested. I, I would be in, I'd be interested in the magic world where Ross Perot didn't drop out and act kind of flaky and weird. Yeah. I would have loved to have seen what that was like, but uh, sadly he did. And well, it becomes, we're he, never going to get another third party did. candidate because they changed the, the rules. The, the door kind of closed to third party candidates yeah. because after, of Ross Perot. after he left. Yeah. yeah unfortunately. But uh, I mean, there's also the point that perhaps it's a fantasy that that a, you know, somebody like Ron Paul or, who, or Harry Brown, uh, whoever, got into the presidency that they could actually even change anything. You know, that becomes the question. They could do a great deal. And first, one thing, I mean, if you if you didn't care, you could go in and you could let all the non-violent drug offenders out in one day. You could tear up the executive orders if that's what you want to do. Pull it out of the, you know, the register or whatever. Well, that'd be an interesting thing, actually, is the executive orders, because they're, those have such broad swaths of power now that actually a president getting in, and please, I'm not supporting this, I'm just saying if a president getting in, uh, maybe they could just like, you know, like an emperor, just... Psh- stop it all and yeah, they could pull every even, troop from every for all the foreign soil back into the united states but if they've invested all this money and time into campaigning they're less likely to do that they're not going to be like oh woohoo i'm in office i can do whatever the hell oh, I want. oh yeah the, the the political process is a vetting process for who the the most uh, successful sociopath is yeah but i i don't disagree with that for a second the, the incentives <laughs> I mean, are just so so messed up that's i mean we we see what happened to a very successful billionaire who attempted to circumvent the process when the process was more fair back in the mid 90s when it was easier for third party to get in um, we see what happened to him he, he cracked under the pressure mm. this is a guy who's not used to cracking under pressure well maybe that's a sign that he wasn't actually a sociopath to begin with and that's a sad statement on politics in america indeed let's go to skype where trey is on the line hey hey trey you're on free talk live howdy thank you very much yeah um, welcome I, I just wanted to hit a couple things. I, you know, you're just talking about the minimum wage, and I agree with you guys, and I've always agreed with, you know, a minimum wage shouldn't be something that's forced to be high. We shouldn't force businesses to pay um, high wages. However, um, you know, I think they should be willing to, you know, business owners should be willing to look at, you know, what they are paying and, and, and see if they have the ability at least to at least um, you know, pay higher. I have um, a case in point. There you is know, a- well, hold that thought, Trey, because uh, we, yeah. we're going to find out here in moments. I would like to continue this conversation with you. So okay. just hang on the line. I think I'm kind of with them, but we'll, we'll, see. we'll see in moments here. Free Talk Live, 855-450, free, The Sunday Show. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Kay Oliver is part of the Toyambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound, try out the subscription, cancel at any time, coffee.freetalklive.com. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American. Covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. 
It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday night show. Free Talk Live is, of course, live seven nights a week, but tonight is Sunday, and it's kind of unusual to find live radio on Sunday, but here we are doing a show for you. It, we being me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. Free Talk Live is a show where you can call in and take control of the airwaves at 855-450-3733. 855-450-FREE. Still going to get to this cat calling video, but uh, we do have also a call on the line about minimum wage. But you're welcome to bring up anything that you're thinking about at 855-450-3733. Uh, let's go right back to Skype where Trey was on the line with us. Trey, you were just saying in the last segment, and we kind of ran up against the clock, but you were you wanted to talk about the uh, minimum wage, and you said you don't agree with really laws forcing the minimum wage to be raised, but you also kind of think there's some responsibility on business owners to see what they can do to kind of make sure that their employees are making enough to get by. Is that kind of where you're coming from? Yeah, absolutely. Because I mean, as we know, um, once once a, once a business is established, at the beginning, if it's somebody starting from scratch, the, biz- the business owner is definitely in there. Their hands are getting dirty, um, and, and I understand that. You know, my mom did that, and, and I've been in the restaurant business for 21 years. I'm 35. I started when I was 14 w- working at her restaurant, so I understand. Um, you know, not only that, but I, I live in Portland, Oregon now, but I come from New Orleans, Louisiana, where the minimum wage for this is sub minimum wage for service is still at two thirteen an hour. Now here in Portland, which I don't necessarily agree with this, um, but here in Oregon, the minimum wage for service is, is the normal minimum wage for the entirety of Oregon, which is uh, like nine dollars and plus tips, an hour. plus tips. Right. Wow. So you, you and so what that does? You're gonna, Mark's going to move to Oregon and be a server. <laughs> that price, what that does is that prices young people out of the server market, and they never, and it makes it difficult for them to learn how to do that. Right. Absolutely, it's super competitive here. Even as long as I see now. Keep in mind, I'm from New Orleans. I'm from some place where I mean, it's a big deal. You know, when you work at restaurants, especially really good restaurants. So you come here. Not that there's not great food here, but what what happens is. I've there's there's been times when I've gone to eat most of the time here in Portland where we go to um, restaurants and it takes a good 
three to five minutes before a server even comes and talks to us. And the re reason being is because the um, owners of the restaurants aren't able to hire um, enough servers because they're paying them such an exorbitant amount. Mm. Um, and, and so, you know, instead of hanging like, you know, a, a waiter in New York and New Orleans, a really good waiter will take three, maybe four tables and they'll handle that and they'll do it well. Well, here, a quote unquote good server will handle like, um, s uh, six or, you know, five or six or sometimes seven tables. I but think I would find myself tipping less, um, right. in, if I was in o Oregon, because I would get well, as you're pointing out, or service. Also, I would have in my mind that uh, they're making more from the business. Being a server um, is kind of an interesting, uh, strange example. It's kind of an ex exception, I guess, because there's this yes. cultural expectation that the person who eats at the restaurant is going to pay the, the wages of the server. Whereas with most of other jobs, even service jobs, there isn't that expectation. You're just paying for the service you receive, right. not like a, a tip that's kind of nebulous and how much do you leave? And it's kind of weird. And, um, you know, the other thing that comes to mind when whenever this conversation comes up, Trey, is like the concept of hourly wages. It's, I don't know, to me... I think that it, it might be better if people could get paid based on the value that they provide or based on the jobs that they complete or the work that they actually get done, the productivity, uh, rather than the number of hours that they spent doing sure. the job. Because what hourly wages do is just incentivize people to take a long time to finish the job, right? Absolutely. Like, right. To do less right. work in a longer amount of time. Yeah. It's really yeah. backwards. I, I I've said before to other people, you know, when, when, when we fill out a, when we're offered a job and we, you know, we fill out a job application, we, we're offered a job by some, you know, company, you know, X or what have you. When, when, you know, these higher paying jobs, you know, whenever you're getting paid, you know, $150,000 a year on up, a lot of times you're enter, entering into like a contract and this contract says, this is how much you're going to get paid. You get a bonus, bonuses based on this and, mm -hmm. and, and so forth and so on. And why can't that be the same way for the rest of us? And, and this contract has to be owned, um, you know, honored by both sides. Real quick though, I wanted to, um, the, one of the reasons I brought up this minimum wage thing about, you know, companies being able to pay higher, there is a, um, a company called Moo Moo Cluck, and it's a fast food company, and they're uh, like a higher quality burger joint, okay? Moo and Moo Cluck. They, that's Moo Moo Cluck. Cute. That's what yeah. it's called. That's a, yeah, it's fantastic. That's a great name. Um, and what they do is when they first started, they were paying, when they first started with like one, two restaurants, they were paying their workers $12 an hour. Now they're paying $15 an hour. And this is like, um, and, and it, there's this article, and I just have a small snippet, and it reads, uh, one common concern about raising the minimum wage for fast food workers is that customers will have to pay more for their food. But the owner, Parker, said that it is not a problem at Moo Moo Cluck. They charge $3 for a burger with an extra charge for cheese or bacon. Of course, we want to make money in our endeavor so that we can grow, Parker said. But we're not wallowing in funds and extra money that we do not want to share with the rest of the team. We want to spread the wealth around. So now this sounds fairly socialistic, but it's not whenever it's the owner making that choice for themselves. But that owner's in competition he, with people who pay a lower wage. And so what they're right. able to do is they're able to, by paying a higher wage, get a higher quality of employee who's going to have less waste, exactly. um, less uh, you know, less theft, and, and they're going to get be able to produce more efficiently. I was if, however, say there is a minimum wage, then what it does is it negates all the value that that owner, that that owner Absolutely. gets by pay, paying whatever it is above. Absolutely right. Yeah, it's demoralizing uh, to make minimum wage. Yeah, you know, it just it stinks to work at a job like that. I it's, think a lot of these business owners, managers, whoever uh, in the in the hierarchies, I'll say, I think a lot of them really thrive. Their their payment models thrive off of societal uh, like ideas of what exactly like thinking that fast food is some kind of low rent job. Mm, um, right. or, or like that, that it's, it doesn't take skill mm, or yeah. thinking that being a waiter doesn't take skill and yeah, stuff like this, unless you're skill. in Manhattan, then, you oh, know, absolutely. there's areas where it's different, but I think they really do thrive off of that. Not so much that people aren't worth it and that they can't pay these people that much, but they just buy into the societal norm that, yeah, that's for kids well, or right. that this is for people that, that just aren't but very good at what it, they do. It kind of is. And this is the problem with the minimum wage. So, uh, kids, 
can run a Burger King except for the manager who's going to be a little bit older and kind of run the kids, right? So it's a to, to some extent it's like a uh, uh, a high school project, um, you know, running one of these fast. Foods. Some can, okay. It, it can. It has in the past, but the problem is the market contracts as it has over the last the course of the last five years, and then what you find is twenty and thirty and forty year olds working at at, at With minimum PhDs. wage jobs, <laughs> keeping people who are young people who are supposed to be making minimum wage because minimum wage is a wage that you're going to pay somebody who doesn't know the value of getting up and getting on to work on time, doesn't know the value of keeping a smile on their face, doesn't know the value of, uh, you know, doing what their boss says without uh, you know, a bunch of questions, doesn't know the value of combing their hair for work, you know, all these yeah, things that are I don't know if I stuff. agree with you on that because I think the managers themselves look at this job, again, as a joke. They, they feel like they are society's joke. And that you know, go rolls down to the new hires. That but rolls I think down that's to because the teenagers. Of the minimum wage initially. There used to be, I remember these old videos on old uh, fast food restaurants, and you'd have that, you know, they have two guys in a white castle, and one of them never touched the money. He was just always cleaning. I mean, this was a guy, you know, a middle aged type guy, and he's working his butt off in there. And I don't know, I think that it's because of the minimum wage that we come to the conclusion that these jobs are only for the people that we think they're for. The managers of these businesses have to be competent managers. Yeah, Trey, thanks for the call. This is an interesting topic, and I'm glad you brought it up. This is Free Talk Live. Your opinions on minimum wage? Is it demoralizing? Is it all right? Should it be raised? 855-450-FREE here on The Sunday Show. More coming up. 855-450-FREE. Hi, I'm Sam Nussbaum, WellPoint's Chief Medical Officer. We proudly support the March of Dimes mission to improve the health of babies and fight premature birth. We're helping the March of Dimes fund breakthroughs in research and community programs that help more moms have full-term pregnancies and healthy babies. Join us in working together to provide children with a healthier start in life. Visit marchofdimes.org. How many good people procrastinate? When was the last time you updated your last will and testament, your living will, and your health care power of attorney? If you could get these documents included with your Legal Shield membership for no additional charge, wouldn't it just make sense to have the peace of mind of owning a Legal Shield membership? Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. A congressman recently revealed that legislation totaling 2,900 pages and involving more than $1 trillion was available to members of Congress for less than 48 hours to study and consider. That's over 60 pages of legislation per hour. Do you think anyone read the entire bill? I'm Jim Babka with DownsizedDC.org. Consider a proposal buried in a 3,200-page, $388 billion bill, which would have empowered committee chairmen or their agents to examine Americans' tax returns. When this horrible provision came to light, no one claimed to know how it got into the bill. One congressman question said, I didn't write it, I didn't approve it, I wasn't even consulted. If your attorney represented you this way, he might be disbarred. But this is how Congress represents you every day. That's why DownsizedDC.org has created the Read the Bills Act. You can force Congress to read their bills before they pass them at DownsizedDC.org. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Lil Drums. Every bit as fun as a full-size Nestle drumstick cone and definitely cuter. Visit us at drumstick.com. Vacations are all about family time, but you don't have to leave home to have fun. Take one weekend a month and devote it to family activities. Pull out the board games and puzzles, serve up some treats, or have a picnic. Even without leaving home, you'll feel like you've really had some time away. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. 
Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippie! On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidadi. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday night show. Free Talk Live is a show where you can call in about anything that's on your mind. Still have to get to this uh, catcalling topic, but you're welcome to bring up anything that interests you. We were talking about minimum wage and uh, the protest about the Washington Redskins, but uh, really anything that's on your mind is welcome here on Free Talk Live at 855-450-3733. That's 855-450-FREE, the word free, one more time, 855-450-3733. And of course, tonight it's me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. Have you ever noticed how foreign news will have a completely different take on the issues than yes, I have noticed that. domestic news? It's Indeed. really kind of interesting. And I don't think that I, I tend not to trust foreign news either. One place I like to go to get another side of the story is antiwar.com. Now, antiwar.com um, is a site that doesn't support the military industrial complex and what that can make it very difficult to make a living believe me here on free talk live we understand <laughs> what anti-war doesn't have is a pot of gold the war machine has the magic of the federal reserve's printing press and the mainstream media all anywar.com has is you anywar.com staff is down to a skeleton crew with minimal pay and they're com but they're committed to keeping the website up with the best of the worst of all the bad news but they can't do it for free. They can't do it without you. They need your donation. Please go to antiwar.com and donate or call them today. They gladly and happily take Bitcoin. Uh, anti -war I, I was just about to say, I'm going to antiwar.com right now, and I'm going to send them some Bitcoin. Yep, I'm going I'm to do it again, too. Antiwar.com slash donate because war is the health of the state. All right. Let's go to the phones. And talk to Chuck in South Carolina. He wants to talk about the Redskins. Hey, Chuck, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, good evening. Good evening to you. I'm. Uh, I, it's my opinion that the uh, Native Americans should get over it. I grew up in a diversified neighborhood uh, in Detroit, Michigan. I'm 77 years old. And uh, I don't know. I don't want to offend anybody. But in my neighborhood... We had Lebanese, uh, we had uh, uh, Iraqis, we had uh, Italians, we had Germans, we had Irish, and uh, we didn't take offense. And uh, I did, uh, my cousin uh, went to school out in Oklahoma, and he came home with, a, with an American Indian and, uh, as, a, as a friend. So I, I, I just think, you know, in this uh, politically correct uh, time uh, that uh, that the uh, American Indians should get over it. We've got the Braves, the Seminoles. That's going to be next, the Seminoles, Florida State. I think that um, – so I, I lived in a pretty rough place for a while, too. I spent uh, nearly nine years in prison. And people d used – you know, the pejorative terms to refer to each other. Uh, we actually got an Indian guy in, from India at one point, and it didn't take very long before people were referring to him as a coolie. I mean, it really, you know, they would use these. I've never heard that term before. <laughs> well, you can go ahead well, and look it up. It sounds like it's not yeah, very nice. Right. Like, um, you know, it, they, they sort of identify each other by color, and, uh, you know, that's important there. And honestly, as long as you use the right tone in your voice, it wasn't a problem to use terminology there that would be considered highly offensive anyplace else. Now, I don't know what the value of that is as far as, 
you know, taking the sting off of ethnically uh, pejorative terms. But I think that I think there's something to be said for it, but I don't think it works for everybody. It's kind of hard to, I mean, just to play devil's advocate here, Chuck, don't you think it might be a little harder to just brush it off if your whole life you're being constantly reminded that there are certain people who don't like you because of what something that you can't control, which is what color you are? Well, yeah, uh, God made us all different, and we can't control our color, but, you know, it's like uh, uh, growing up, uh, 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 African American was a Negro, and then it was black, and then it was... It was colored first. Yeah. Yeah. Now, and, or, yeah, uh, Oriental, the term Oriental, too. Like, right, a, Oriental a rock is, is Oriental, a person is but that Asian. Hasn't go, <laughs> that hasn't gone all the way across the United States. So um, yeah. there are places where t- using the term Oriental to describe somebody. When I lived in Florida, I had a boss who was half uh, ja- Japanese and half Chinese. Mm-hmm. And I asked her, do you have any thoughts on somebody using the term Oriental to describe you? And she had no thoughts on it at all. Like, it wasn't, oh, yeah, well, some people feel this way, some people feel that way. She had no clue. Like, she's just, yeah, I'm Oriental or Asian, whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. But it, on the West Coast of the United States, if you call somebody who's, uh, you know, ethnically uh, Asian Oriental, that's a problem. Now, I don't like the term Asian because Russians are Asian, aren't they? Um, you yeah, know, Indians are there's Asian. lots of white people who are in Asia. Yeah. Asia doesn't really describe people the same way. You don't want to use the term Mongoloid. I mean, that's just <laughs> awful. Well, it would be Mongolian. Not... A... Anyway, yeah, Chuck, I, go ahead. I have a, I have a daughter uh, who uh, is adopted from Korea, and I use the term Oriental. And uh, I was someplace, and somebody took me aside and said, no, you can't use that term anymore. Uh, I said, well, I have a daughter who's uh, from Korea. And he Too said, bad. no, it's Asian now. It's Asian. <laughs> well, what you know, does your daughter think it? about being called that? Does she have an opinion? Uh, not really. Yeah. Uh, she just went back to uh, Korea with her family this year for, uh, to the orphanage that she was adopted from. Mm. And uh, she did say that... <laughs> It was it was good to be people who looked like her. <laughs> sure. Uh, well, you know, thanks for the call, Chuck. Yeah, I'd really love it. I mean, I guess if people could all just kind of get over it and maybe not take offense to so many things, um, but then does that mean we can stop calling people illegals and just recognize them as other human <laughs> beings? <laughs> oh, or is one, nobody yeah. going to do that? Uh, I, I wonder. You know, and I mean, is or yeah, the, the, those Russians, you know, I mean, if we're going to get over things, if we're going to get over like, you know, that there's no pejorative terms whatsoever, then can everybody go ahead and like stop using them then or not well, stop you using know, them? Th- those but, people is another one of them. Like sure. a, a lot of times people talk about gay, gay people. They're like. Those people do that, right. you know. <laughs> so yeah. those people is has been interpreted at this point as to be a you know pejorative statement. You're not but allowed it, to say those the, people. The tone, right? Like right. the tone conveys the disgust, and that's right. what that's what's really the problem. But right? oftentimes it's, they'll they'll uh, derail the conversation. Will get derailed. Like you know, you use this term "those people" as a refer to not these people, um, <laughs> you know, and then the conversation gets derailed. I think the first problem, the first thing we need to do is stop using pejorative terms. And redskin is a pejorative term and that's where like i get that we need a better term perhaps for indian um i I always like to trot out the example that uh you know he was talking about the evolution of what we call black americans um and it's gotten to the point where and i have seen this written where it's uh, african um, let's see americans of african uh, sub-saharan african descent and that's a lot of syllables compared to the one syllable in black yeah, I don't think anyone uses that. And besides, like, what not if regularly. What if you're from Haiti? You're not African American. You're just black. Yeah, and right. So what black's a, a, a nice term, and it's short and syllable, and it works. Where when we start this First Nations, I think that that you know, three syllables, not too bad, but it gets. I think it's difficult for people. They don't like the change. It used to be, all I had to do is call all of them colored, right? Like, you know, and now now we have to have new terms. And, like, I get how that's confusing and upsetting. I think they should just get over it it because, like, it really is not that big of a deal to just call someone what whatever makes them comfortable if you want to have a relationship well, with Well, that's them, the right? thing. They shouldn't get over it. They should. You should just respect a person's choice. I'm saying uh, the people who don't want to change the words that they're saying, 
oh. in order to make people more comfortable should get over it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sometimes you get a scolding for not using the right term, and I don't want to get scolded for anything. Yeah, Look, no. I may or may that's... not know what your little favorite term of the day is, mm -hmm. but <laughs> that doesn't mean I deserve a scolding. Yeah, but for instance, like people who change their gender, uh, you've said in the, in the past, Mark, or, and we've also had callers that really resent having to like learn to call the person Michelle instead of Michael or whatever, or her instead of him. But if it's learning, that's one thing. If it's just digging your feet in over the term, mm -hmm. um, I remember there was, I can't remember what movie it was, but there was this one where they were talking about Muhammad Ali versus Cassius Clay. And uh, one of the barbers is going, Cassius, his mama named him Cassius, his name's Cassius, <laughs> right? And, uh, you yeah. know, it's this, it's this attitude that because something was some way in the past, it must continue to be that way into the I future. I think that's called conservatism, but what do you think? 855 450 free. What's in a name? It's Free Talk Live Sunday. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Hi, everyone. I'm Chuck Woolery. After putting a few thousand couples together on Love Connection, you know that nothing kills romance faster than bad breath. Smart Mouth gets at the cause of bad breath without the burn. And you get clean breath for about 12 hours. Other mouthwashes only prevent bad breath for about an hour. Gum and mints, well, they just cover it up. Use Smart Mouth in the morning for great breath all day. Rinse in the evening for clean, kissable breath all night. You can even wake up without morning breath. Smart Mouth, for 12 hours of real clean breath, look for the green box at your favorite store. The Genesis Communications Network is one of America's premier broadcasters of captivating talk radio. We thank you for listening. Now, now, just imagine, there are thousands of people who are just as passionate about radio as you are. But what you may not realize is how easy and affordable it is to advertise with us. Radio commercials for your business could be heard on hundreds of radio stations across the U.S. every day. We can help you by creating an effective radio advertising campaign for your company. From script writing to producing your commercial just like the one you're listening to right now no other network provides the level of customer service we do when it comes to radio advertising we are your one-stop shop and no matter how big or small your business is we can help email us and advertise at gcnlive.com and an experienced advertising executive will help you take the first step towards driving more customers to your business or website advertise at gcnlive.com easy affordable effective why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. 
Rats is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download Rats free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday night show with me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. Are we all a bunch of racists? Are we all a bunch of PC liberals? I, you might think both after listening to this show, or you might have a completely different opinion, or you might want to bring up your own topic. And in that case, that's totally fine with us because it is Free Talk Live. Call in at 855-450-3733. That's 855-450-FREE. One more time, 855-450-3733. I just want to let everybody know that Brian and I, uh, we announced last week and also a little earlier in the show uh, that we are going to be leaving the Sunday show uh, Free Talk Live shortly. But I just want to let people know that Brian and I do do other projects. We've Brian has his own podcast that he puts out every week. It's called Sovereign Tech, and it's a technology podcast about how science and technology can set you free. And so if you listen to Free Talk Live and you want to hear some more in-depth discussion, I think, especially about the ideas of liberty and as they relate to technology, definitely tune into Sovereign Tech. I'm the producer and I'm often on the show, so you can kind of keep in touch with both of us there at sovryntech.com. Yeah, I don't know how many people that uh, don't want solutions from the state talk about technology in the podcast realm. Uh, I don't think there's too many. And so it's uh, it's, it's a rarity and a good time. (laughs) Well, you say you do your show so that your opinions can get out there because That's the only they're reason. underrepresented. They, they're absolutely. not being heard. No, not everybody else is a status. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you can hear Brian at SovereignTech.com. All right, let's go to the phones and talk to George listening in Florida. Hi, George. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, good evening. How you doing? Doing great tonight. Welcome. Okay. What, what I am referring to and probably asking a question because where does the propriety name for Indian tribes. Now, I'm I'm in Tallahassee, and I'm an alumni of Florida State University. You don't sound like a woman. Pardon? <laughs> <I'm> just, just, <laughs> he said alumni. I know. No, no. Uh, Florida State used to be a girls' school, and uh, uh, oh. having gone to the University of Florida, I don't mind giving them a good ribbing about that. Yeah, but look at our football record. <laughs> <laughs> they don't mind giving us good ripping either. Right. Okay. Uh, anyway, we we have an agreement. Florida State University has an agreement with the Seminole Tribe of Florida to use the name Seminole. Yep. Okay. Now, in, in Tallahassee, there are various and many businesses that begin their the name of their business with the word Seminole. Yep. Now, okay, let's say... Does, what about the Utah Utes? Are you familiar with that team? I'm not. Can you help me out a little bit? Well, I, I, I've never been to the – I don't know much about it, but I've heard that there is a team out there, a, a college team. I don't know if it's the University of Utah or what, but they're the, they call themselves the Utes, U-T-E-S. Okay. Not, not to be confused with Joe Pesky and his vocabulary, but anyway, uh, what – who owns the name Dakota? For instance, the Dakota tribes. You were talking about those early being part of the Sioux Nation. Okay. What about South Dakota? Is somebody going to come and say, you can't use the name Dakota, so you've got to change South Dakota and North Dakota to South Smith and North Smith? That's a, it's a great question. Who owns the name George, right? If someone wants to call their state Georgia and you don't like that, right? Well, I don't think it's an intellectual property issue um, at, the, at this point. Uh, I, I get where you're no, coming it's, from. It's totally voluntary, right? It's like right. They, want, they want the approval of the Seminole tribe, so they want to make them go out of their way to consult with them and make them feel comfortable. And uh, they have. Uh, the, the Florida State Seminoles and the Seminole tribe get along well. But like, who does own a word? Like, it's nobody but, does. It's an idea. But I can tell you, the University of Florida has not consulted any reptiles about the naming of its uh, its um, uh, mascot. The yeah. Gators. I, I yes. think probably Liberace owns his own name. 
<laughs> sorry, sorry. What was that, George? I missed that. I, I would probably think in the past Liberace owned his own name. Sure. I think he probably had that copyrighted. Uh, huh. Oh, because his name's so anyway, unique. Yeah, it was unique. It's probably a made-up name, but his name was probably Joe Smith or something like that before he became Liberace. But anyway, I was just posing the question as yep. to how far does ownership of an Indian, well, and I won't say Indian because I say Native American, yeah. name go. Thanks for the call, George. Thanks for bringing that okay. up. I appreciate your call. Right. That's uh, an interesting Well, question. I think, you know, th there's actually a case where a name given to Indians became accepted by the quote-unquote ruling body, and I say that because things get lost in translation, uh, and that is the Haudusani. okay? They accepted the name Iroquois. That's not the name that they came up with. Mm. And they're like, okay, no, yeah, that's fine. You can use it. But that's the point is that the, you know, the people that it matters to, that the word is for, okay, said, yeah, no, that's fine. You can use that. And it just comes down to, you know, with like with personal, in, in an individual, you know, nothing in society should go beyond. This is part of the problem is that people think once it becomes uh, more than one person or a society issue, that somehow things change. And that's the real issue. That's where I think government comes from. That's where the state comes from, this whole, this fiction, this idea. Uh, and so, you know, in a one-to-one -one setting, if you know somebody, okay, lost, I don't know, whatever happened to them, that some tragedy occurred and you had an item perhaps that reminded them of that tragedy. Now, look, it's not your fault that that's the case. But if you, like, you know, if you want to have an interaction with this person, are you going to keep reminding them of this trauma no, you you don't want to do that, and and so I just I well, think it depends on how inconvenient it is for you to give up the item. Yeah, I mean, that, that depends. What if it's your face that reminds them of the trauma? Like, are you gonna just get plastic surgery? It no, 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 no. Of, of course not. But if that's the case, I mean, that if it's, what your, if it's your car, but then but then but then that becomes okay. If it's a car, yeah, like well, oh, I got hit by a by a, a Toyota or something, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I, I mean. Yeah, I just think it gets into, it does get into ridiculous realms, but I don't think this red skin thing is a ridiculous realm. I right. and, and I don't think that these, and I, I'm i more concerned even with the fans that just go around completely insensitive oh, um, yeah. to what exactly occurred to people that actually wore those feathers. Mm. Uh, you know, and do you have to care so far? You know, I don't, no one should be able to, to lay that out. And certainly I wouldn't want any legal action against it, but let's just be human beings to each other and say, okay, you're offended. Fine. You know, it's easy enough to change. And I mean, why, well, who's yeah, owning so much on the big deal that it's the Redskins? Like, you know, is some guy, is the quarterback going to cry tomorrow saying, oh my God, I'm not a Redskin anymore. <laughs> I mean, come on. It's like, it's okay if the next day, you know, you're a, a, a Starbucks or something, you know. I, I'm with you when it comes to Redskins and I'm with you when it comes to the Cleveland Indians at least getting rid of that offensive little yeah. fellow that they've got. Chief at, Wahoo. At, at, at some point or another, I stop uh, this at, you know, I don't think the atheists should be able to stop the Anaheim Angels from being called the Anaheim Angels, right? Like, your name offends me. You've got magical characters, right? As an atheist, that does not offend me. Right. I mean, like, it doesn't <laughs> offend you. But, you know, I look, I spent years, uh, in you know, in the church and, um, you know, being in private school and all this stuff. And I have a great deal of damage from my uh, Christian upbringing. I am not an atheist. But, uh, you know... I could very well be upset about that. Why should I bother? So at some point, for me, it's just the pejorative terms. That's where I'm um, I'm going to draw the line because redskin is a nasty thing to call somebody. That's from the get-go, um, as is you know, drawing silly little characters of people with buck teeth and red skin and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, there's so much more to say about this, but we do have a call on the line from Ron in Iowa. So let's talk to Ron. I think you want to talk about the elections, Ron. Welcome to Free Talk Live. Well, welcome. Thank you for taking my call. Sure thing. I was just uh, I was just calling tonight to uh, just a small reflection upon the elections on Tuesday. I remember back in the elections of 2008, I'd called into a talk radio show here in Des Moines, Iowa, and just talking about, well, if you voted for this person or that person, it's going to be a waste of vote because they're unelectable, blah, blah, blah. And I called in and I said, you know, you want to know what my definition is of a wasted vote? And they said, what's that? I said this, I quote, a wasted vote is a vote that is cast while in compromise to your own principles. That is a wasted vote. 
I think that so probably uh, stings for people that are doing big compromises. But don't we all make little compromises if we vote at all? I think we do because not a single candidate is perfect. Not a single one is untainted. Um, I heard a person say once about getting involved in politics, is, or like, uh, or shall I say, uh, Christians being involved in politics, like wrestling with a pig. Uh, the pig doesn't like it, and you come out smelly. <laughs> yeah, the pig does like and, it, uh, right? <laughs> depends on the pig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I just when we vote, I think we need to really look at. Uh, especially when it comes to a presidential election like this one is not, we need to vote for that man or that woman who is running for office, who will best support, uphold, and defend the Constitution of the United States of America. And Thanks for the call, Ron. We're up against the clock. I appreciate your thoughts. This is Free Talk Live. I don't vote. You want to talk about that? 855-450-FREE. There's more coming up here on Sunday Show. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Talk radio generally and Free Talk Live specifically are a really inexpensive way to reach customers. All advertising is about return on investment. If you keep your investment low, you have a better chance of seeing a proper return. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations and the internet, reaching hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, November 2nd, 2014. Silver is trading at $16.17 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,173 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $327. Antiwar.com reports the election in the rest of Ukraine was loudly cheered by the international community, but this weekend's vote in the breakaway eastern oblast of Donetsk and Luhansk is being condemned by most of the same people. The election will create the first parliament of the Donetsk People's Republic and will assemble the prime ministerial form of government. The republic will serve as the de facto autonomous region and also the potential government if they secede outright. Recognition of the election seems to be along the same line as recognition of the rebels themselves, with Russia promising to accept the results and the US and EU outraged both at the vote and at Russia's recognition. The Donetsk People's Republic, formed after the protesters in western Ukraine, ousted the pro-Russian government and the new government banned the Russian language, ubiquitous among ethnic Russian Easterners. The war that followed has mostly stalled and negotiations for a settlement center around granting the Easterners some measure of self-rule, along with the restoration of Russian as an official language. 
FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. Reuters reports Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Saturday urged lawmakers to show restraint over Jerusalem's Al-Aqsa Mosque, which has been at the heart of the rising tension with the Palestinians in recent weeks. Daily clashes between Israeli security forces and Palestinians in the streets of East Jerusalem and the Al-Aqsa compound, known to the Jews as the Temple Mount, have been stoking fears of a new Palestinian infatada or uprising. In a sign of concern that the situation could escalate, Netanyahu called in a statement on all Knesset members to calm tensions regarding the Temple Mount and show responsibility and restraint. The Palestinians say Israel is looking to change the delicate status quo of Al-Aqsa, the third holiest site in Islam and the most holy site in Judaism. Under the rules governing access to Al-Aqsa, which is administered by Jordanian religious authorities, Jews are allowed into the compound but are not permitted to pray. Netanyahu has said Israel has no intentions of altering the status quo, but far-right activists and lawmakers have been pushing for Jewish worship at the site. Israeli police often restrict access to Al-Aqsa when concerned about possible violence there, only letting in women and Muslim men over the age of 40 or 50. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Coinbase also allows you to buy and sell Bitcoin using a bank account or use their tools to accept Bitcoin as a merchant. Opening a wallet is quick and easy, and for merchants, there are no transaction fees on the first million dollars worth of transactions. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. USA Today reports the leader of Boko Haram dashed hopes for the release of 200 kidnapped girls on Saturday, denying reports of a truce with the government. Boko Haram's leader says the schoolgirls have converted to Islam and married off, saying the issue of the girls is long forgotten because I have long ago married them off. The news goes counter to what the Nigerian government said nearly two weeks ago when it announced a ceasefire deal with the terrorist organization, raising hopes among the families of the kidnapped girls who were taken from the northeastern Nigerian town of Chabak in April that their daughters would soon be released. But as the weeks dragged on with no sign of the kidnapped girls, hopes began to fade. Human Rights Watch estimates that Boko Haram, whose name loosely translates as Western Education is Forbidden, has abducted around 500 young women over the past five years. Altogether, some girls managed to escape, though their whereabouts and the fate of the rest of the young women are uncertain. A recent Human Rights Watch report based on interviews with the victims and witnesses of Boko Haram abductions offer rare insights into a series of physical and sexual abuses the girls suffer in capacity, including rape, forced labor, and beatings. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. According to a report released Monday, Americans currently lead the world in compressing big sandwiches into sufficiently biteable sizes, outranking countries such as Germany, Slovenia, and Ukraine in their sheer capacity to squeeze BLTs, meatball subs, and grinders into shapes that will easily and efficiently fit into their open mouths. Researchers pointed out that in series after series of tests, Americans consistently topped international rankings by implementing over 800 pounds per square inch of compressive force on sandwich categories as diverse as banh mi, croque monsieurs, or gyros, rarely hesitating for more than a moment before diving in and pushing the bread together and wedging it into their mouths. Even in the cases in which Americans failed to sufficiently compress a sandwich and say dropped a straight piece of bacon or avocado, they still led the pack on quickly scooping up this topping with their hands and eating it, sometimes even inventively doing so with a straight potato chip or french fry. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. It is the final hour of tonight's program, but still time to get your calls in. 
You can bring up anything that's on your mind. That's why we call it Free Talk Live. Still got to talk about the catcalling video. And I also want to tell the story of a, a, a business owner who had her bank account seized for no reason at all, except that uh, the IRS didn't like how she was depositing the batches that she was depositing her money in wasn't charged with any crime Uh, we'll get to that a little bit later on here hopefully but if you have anything that you want to talk about tonight with us the number to call is 855-450-3733 or on skype you can dial into lrn.fm dial in click in i don't really know what you can skype us at (laughs) lrn.fm if you're not connected to us already just send us a contact request we'll take care of that And the phone number, one more time, a couple more times, 855-450-FREE, the word free. One more time, that's 855-450-3733. Bring up anything that's on your mind tonight. So, um, you know, I just want to say, we had announced a little earlier in the show, Brian and I are going to be leaving the Sunday show here pretty soon. Um, And if you want to keep in touch with me specifically, um, I do a couple of other podcasts. I'm on the pod, the show Let's Talk Bitcoin, and you can find that at letstalkbitcoin.com. Brian and I also have another podcast together called The Sex and Science Hour, which you can find at sexandsciencehour.com. That's right. We, we're going to reboot that at some point. We haven't made a show, a new show in a little while, but the back archive is there. And uh, you can follow us on SoundCloud if you want to be the first to know when we start, uh, start that up again. Um, but just wanted to kind of let people know that we're not... We're not going to be like fading away from the public eye. We're certainly going to still be out there doing podcasts and things like that. Just doing them from the comfort of our home where we don't have to drive really long and <laughs> not make, get paid very much money <laughs> to go here <laughs> to Free Talk Live. No offense, We don't Mark. call it Free Talk Live for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> free is in liberty, not beer, right? <laughs> <laughs> Both. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think I want to talk about... The, I'd rather talk about the woman who had her bank account seized than we'll get into the catcalling thing. Because I don't know. I just feel like the bank account is a little more important from a freedom perspective. You know, like I, everybody's talking about this catcalling video. They've gotten enough free press. Let's talk about what happened to uh, this lady, Karen. Basically, I'm having trouble pulling up the article here, but I can summarize it really easy. She owned a Mexican restaurant and she was operating in a cash business. You know, a lot of restaurants use cash. Actually, they get demonized. Uh, we read an article a couple of weeks ago uh, about how cash-only businesses sometimes really have problems because they are, you know, getting these nasty articles written about them, like the one that we read, saying that they must be mafiosos if they're operating only in cash. And, of course, that's not true. But this this was a nice older lady. She was operating a Mexican restaurant. And she was depositing money into her bank account at her local bank, I guess. And she had heard from her mother that if she that the bank has to report uh, your name or has to fill out some paperwork if you deposit more than ten thousand dollars at a time worth of cash. And she said, "Oh, she's you know a nice lady." She says, "Oh, I think I'll I'll be helpful. I'll save the bank some paperwork, and I'll I won't put in more than ten thousand dollars at a time." Uh, by the way, her name is Carol Hinders, and she's from Iowa. Yeah, and what a pain it would be to put in. Uh, you know, I don't want to. I want to spend as little time at the bank as possible, and I don't want to fill out your uh, yeah. money reports or whatever. Who wants to do that? I mean, I'm sure the bank, the people who work at the bank, don't want to either. Yeah. They if, just were required to by the Bank Secrecy Act or something, some act. Of if you make more frequent uh, deposits, doesn't that mean your money's safer too? Isn't that mm-hmm. the service that banks provide? So if I go get my money more frequently, put my money more frequently in the bank, then my, that much more money of mine is safe. Yeah, exactly. So she would deposit um, because she had heard this rumor. Um, she would deposit, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of nine thousand dollars at a time, never going over ten thousand dollars. And one day, the IRS went into her bank account and confiscated thirty three thousand dollars from her. Did not charge her with any crime. Did not even suspect her of any crime. Was she said? It says she was not suspected of tax fraud. She wasn't under investigation for anything. It was just that the pattern that she was putting in this money with was, they said, was consistent with structuring, which is specifically uh, making deposits in order to avoid reporting requirements. Yeah. Now, consider this. <laughs> to talk about how ridiculous this is. 
consider if you have a if you have a business, you know, perhaps you go and deposit your profits in the bank or your your income your revenues in the bank every week. And maybe you never make more than $10,000 a week. Maybe you're always making between $9,000 and $9,999 every week. And maybe you just don't go over that. Uh, you know, are you supposed to bundle it and wait until it's over $10,000 so you do trigger the reports? How far are you supposed to go? It's kind of like you're damned if you do or you're damned if you don't. You're damned if you do deposit more than $10,000 at a time or more than $3,000 at a time or whatever the arbitrary limit for your particular situation happens to be uh, because then you get a report filed on you and it goes to the government and they can use that to suspect you and investigate you. But you're also damned if you don't because if you try to avoid those reports, then they can get you for structuring. So it's like they create this state. I'm not sure that that's exactly what they're trying to say here. And I think that... in defense of the state, I just want to make sure that we're clear on what they're saying. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> well, I don't want to misinterpret what they're saying. Mm-hmm. I think the lady said that she was that she designed her deposits in order to not have to do the paperwork, right? Like she to make it easier on everybody, they didn't want to do the paperwork, so she made sure that she more frequently made the deposits. Does she, that sound right to you? She did say that, but she only Because that is structuring. Well, yes, but she didn't. She wasn't aware that she was <laughs> right. doing that. It is. She, she didn't know she was breaking a law. She I got wasn't you. trying okay. to. Yeah. So at, at putting in nine thousand at a time, mm-hmm. because ten thousand is kind of a magic number. It is the in, magic number in yeah. a lot of these. Uh, you know, even what with what you cross across but a border 3, and all that. Three thousand is another magic number, and, and they're all arbitrary, yep. defined by and the state. All no getting doubt. Getting lower thresholds as inflation increases and money becomes less valuable. Absolutely, and it can happen from you going over the border and coming back. It's it's already happened, um, but. My question. So she did. She was not putting in nine thousand on purpose. She she was putting to avoid that ten thousand magic number. No, she was trying to avoid the number. Okay, and she was doing it because she says just to be helpful. Yes, to, to save people I believe the her. paperwork. So she's what she's doing like is unintentional nice old... structuring. Yeah, and right. The, the law, <laughs> okay. I don't think the law is clear. I don't know about the law, the, the federal law, as far as structuring goes, whether you have to, whether it has to be intentional or not. Yeah. Oftentimes they'll put the word intentional in there, and it's a great word to have because at this point she hasn't violated it if it's intentional. But and and I don't want this woman to I be convicted. S- I think it's silly. I think structuring is does have to be intentional. Okay, let's uh, hope so. I think, but but th- the thing is. What they've done here, the IRS, is akin to just stealing. I mean, it it basically is. They took the money. They didn't charge her with any crime. They took $33,000, so it's not as though she... They they just yanked it from her bank account? It's not as though she's mogul. Yeah, she she took... They took it right, right from her bank account. Hold on. When this happened in... um, uh, What was was the the country with a C? It begins with a C, where they started pulling from the banks. Uh, oh, Cyprus. Cyprus, thank you. Yeah, when this happened in Cyprus, I was told, I was informed by Sean Hannity himself <laughs> that this would never happen in America. Well, that the IRS, these, Sean, these, we will not just yank money out of your bank account for without some kind of legal documentation. Okay, without some, some kind you, of warrants or something. I was told, I was promised not just him, Rush Limbaugh. Uh, in fact, there was a, a bunch of, you know, liberal types on the news that said this will never happen here. What? I guess it did. It's happened to a nice old lady who owns a cash Mexican restaurant. And because her $33,000 that is rightfully hers that she probably worked really hard for was stolen by the IRS without her being charged or suspected of any crime, uh, she has had to max out her credit cards and take out a second mortgage to keep her business running. And that my friend, is how the government crushes entrepreneurs. Indeed it does. Um, This is a really tough situation for this lady. And I I hate how people find out about laws when federal, uh, when 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 they break law enforcement officers, you know, come in and say, well, we're going to have to get you. You know, they're they're not even informing them. I know that ignorance of the law is no excuse, but I want you to consider that that maxim is from the 12th century. When Eng- English when common the only law f- laws were basically don't hit people, don't take their stuff. And, that, right, that yeah. was ignorance of the law was no excuse when that maxim was created. Now ignorance of the law is universal. Yeah. Eight fifty five four fifty free. Is this fair that this woman had her bank bank account raided because she didn't deposit ten thousand dollars once? Free Talk Live, the Sunday Show. Are you searching for your soulmate, someone you can trust, who will never betray you? or cooperate with the NSA? 
stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday night show with me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. Free Talk Live is a show where you can call in and take control of the airwaves, bring up anything that's on your mind. 855-450-3733 is our phone number. 855-450-FREE. One more time, 855-450-3733. You can get a free pound of coffee by going to coffee.freetalklive.com. There, you can sign up for the subscription. You can cancel that subscription at any time. You can get your free pound of coffee, and you can go along your way, and that's fine. Now, this coffee is the best of the best coffee. It's 100% organic, shade-grown, top 1% grade Arabica beans. 
It's excellent coffee. It's among the best coffee you've ever tasted in your life. Now, you can get good coffee on the Internet and likely a few uh, specialty stores in your town. You can get some good coffee. There's no doubt about it. What you can't get is coffee that gives back the way BuzzBox does. They give us a portion of their proceeds so that we can give microloans through Kiva.org. I just gave another set of microloans uh, uh, today, or today, I'm sorry, two days ago. Cool. Um, and it was really awesome to be able to help people. I'm trying and to get that, a whole bunch of different countries. When that gets repaid, you're going to relend it, right? That's exactly so it's right. it's going to stay in the Kiva system. So you're gonna, your gift could be multiplied by... Orders of magnitude. Indeed. So it's coffee.freetalklive.com. You'll get a free pound of coffee, and then you can uh, start your subscription and get coffee like I do. Really great coffee. Coffee.freetalklive.com. All right. Let's go to the phones where David is on the line in Arkansas, listening on 99.1. Oh, no. Hey, David. Are you... No. David? <laughs> hey, David. You're on Free Talk Live. Uh, how are you doing? Okay, I'm on live, so y'all got to be quiet now. <laughs> uh uh, now uh, I'm sorry. I've never I've never done this before. No worries. But, uh, Just uh, tell us what's on your mind tonight. You had something uh, comment about the mayor of Houston. Well, uh, I heard I went to a church service tonight, a church that I've never been to before, mm -hmm. and he said something about if I now I'm going to say this the best I can that the that the preachers and pastors around that area of Houston was getting subpoenaed, which I don't even know what that means, but I don't think I think it's subpoenaed good, is, is when they're forced to testify in court. They're so forced the preachers and the pastors have to testify in court for what? I don't know. You tell us. I'm I think sure. there I'm was some kind of uh, dispute over well, what was I mean, being I preached. I don't understand why they'd even be getting subpoenaed. I think there was. I, I, I don't know the whole story because it was just what the preacher was saying. But, but you know, he was praying about it and stuff. But. Uh, I, I think that in this case, that there was uh, some it. dispute about what was being preached at the pulpit David, at about thank you. five thank or you six for the call churches. Tonight. We'll take. We'll talk about in this. Texas, and uh, the mayor didn't like it. Like some bad things were being said about the mayor or something like that. I don't know. Was this the I, lesbian mayor? I believe this. I believe that was the case. I'm not exactly sure um, what her pro proclivities are, but I think that was mentioned in there. I'm not sure. I thought that I, was like the central point of the story, but maybe I'm conflating two stories. Maybe the, fact I, that the mayor was a lesbian, and the, the churches were giving anti-gay sermons or something like that, and she was saying, "No, no, this is political speech. You can't be doing this as 501c3 organizations. So you have to." Um, submit your sermons in advance to the government or something like that. Well, I think that that's exactly um, really the issue here is, is these churches across America, Houston as well, uh, have decided to file with the government um, as uh, organization. Look, churches have been around a lot longer than the IRS, and the IRS can't make a church file a piece of paper. And as a matter of fact, their rules don't say you have to. But for whatever reason, churches just keep on going to the lawyers, and the lawyers say, yep, sure enough, you've got to pay several thousand dollars to us to get a piece of paper that says you could be in church. And, uh, you know, the lawyers will sell you a piece of paper for several thousand dollars as long, often as you're willing to take it from them. But, um, you know, these churches, they've, uh, they've, they've gone astray. They're taking the money. They're taking, they're taking the, uh, the, the pieces of paper from the government. There's just no reason they should be doing it. And so it's... Because those pieces of paper come with strings attached. Always. Right? Yeah, I have the, the subpoenas here are for all speeches, presentations, or sermons related to HERO. That's a, that's an acronym. Uh, the petition, Mayor Anise Parker, homosexuality or gender identity, prepared by, delivered by, revised by, or approved by you or in your possession. Uh, then that, that's wow. referencing to the the pastors, but they've of now these retracted churches. that. Now I I have a great deal of sympathy for LGBT people. I am a B myself, uh, not not a B word, a bi. But, <laughs> yeah. So I guess, but but, <laughs> uh, but I have to say, this does sound pretty draconian. Like yeah. the government is going to be approving church sermons. That doesn't. Yeah. Make sense. Well, I guess what I have, what was happening today is there was going to be an event. I stand Sunday mm -hmm. in Houston, and that's probably what the sermon today that that the caller heard was about uh was ah. you know 
you know, standing against Denise Parker here, uh, you know, and against her, uh, perhaps her homosexual agenda or, I mean, it is crazy. The government does have no business being in the church. You know, I I agree with that. But I don't like the idea that your church is spending a lot of time, or your preacher is spending a lot of time preaching against homosexuality. There's all kinds of laws in the Old Testament that preachers don't spend any time talking about at all. Sure. Shellfish. There's people sitting in the congregation wearing mixed fabrics. What are we going to do about this? With tattoos? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, I mean, it swings both ways because also I don't think the really, that church well i'm just, <laughs> i'm just saying i don't do. think that the church has no business in the government either you know and that really does go both ways but that's yeah. exactly what these people are doing now if they're going to say well they came at us first uh, i don't know you're the one that's that's ask, asking asking for special exemption as a religious body from the government so really you i think they played ball with them first mm. i will tell you what the homosexual agenda is or what I think it is anyway, it's to be left alone, accepted, and treated like everyone else. There you go. If that was the case, then uh, when gay marriage went through, the homosexuals would have left alone the cake makers and the florists. Well, not all homosexuals did the same thing in that That's not their agenda. Just saying. (laughs) (laughs) They got an agenda. I wish that was their agenda. How about that? I wish it was, too. bisexual agenda is to be left alone, live freely, and be treated like everyone else. (laughs) There we go. Let's talk to Brad in Iowa. Hey, Brad, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, uh, how are you guys doing tonight? Doing I great. just uh, wanted to bring up a couple points, uh, reference that gal that had her money seized through the IRS. Yeah. On her business. Uh, completely wrong. I will say uh, two things. One, the federal government has overbound itself. Extremely too big. Even on your gay issue, a lot of those issues will be resolved more at a state level. But back to the banking. So I recently moved to Iowa, and I've always banked at a credit union. Mm -hmm. Another thing I found, I never knew this before, and I'm not sure how in the world that our public ever allow this to happen, but it has. I have my beliefs on that, but... Uh, So I started up a new checking account, you know, transferred my stuff, and I went to uh, a bank. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I made a deposit, uh, a a decent-sized sum, you know, and uh, put it in my savings. So as I'm doing this, the lady's, like, explaining everything to me, and she's like, now, you know, you're only allowed six times to withdraw out of your savings in a month. Otherwise, you'll be fined by the federal government. Really? I said, what? Yeah. I said, say, tell me that again, because I'm not sure I'm going to run a bank here with you now. <laughs> I, I did. I still did, because I didn't have a whole lot of options. Uh, yeah, sure. Of, if it's a federal law, you know, it would was, apply to every bank. That's uh, That must yeah, be new. I, I didn't know about that I either. Thought. Yeah, thanks for and, the call, yeah, Brett. So I, yeah, thanks for the call, Brad. Right. That's uh, I. It's it's hard to bank in this country with freedom. Let me tell you that. Eight fifty five four fifty free is our number here on Free Talk Live, and there's a war on cash too. More coming up. The human body is extraordinary. Despite all the stresses we inflict upon it, it still works hard to stay in balance. Thousands upon thousands of people rely upon heart and body extract to help their body stay balanced. This excellent 100% natural herbal formula helps maintain healthy blood pressure levels, cleans arteries, promotes good circulation, balances cholesterol, and more. HB extract paired with healthy lifestyle choices like good nutrition and exercise can give you a life free of pain, sickness, and fear. Recapture your youthful vitality and experience your body healing itself with the aid of hb extract it's extremely effective and it starts working in just days visit hbextract.com to learn more and to read scores of testimonials from satisfied customers and we've never increased our price in over 10 years that makes heart and body extract as great a value now as it was the first day we sold it a healthy heart is a happy heart call 866-295-5305 or go to hbextract.com If you're looking for work, the person you are applying to is probably so swamped with applicants that he or she is tough to reach. So call early in the day, before 8 a.m., before the palace guards arrive. You'll need your prospect's direct number, and here's a sneaky way to get it. Suppose the company's main number is 555-5000. You should call 555-5011. 
two. When someone says, good morning, Pam Johnson, you should innocently say, oops, somebody here must have written this down wrong. I was calling for Tom Frederick. What's his direct number? If the very next thing you hear isn't Pam giving you Tom's number, it may be, good morning, Tom Frederick. For more tips for job seekers and getting better results in all your day-to-day communication, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Free Talk Live. There's going to be no food by February. Oh, that seems a little extreme. I find that hard well, to believe. Well, watch it happen. Hope you find Christ. You oh, mean. good luck, buddy. Thanks. What really turned me away from religion was the fact that most of them are so intolerant and nasty. What do Your you mean? life will suck unless you find Jesus. Well, I had Jesus a long time ago, and he didn't really do anything for me, so I got away from that. Right, and I can tell you that uh, if you want to have if you want to have that attitude with people, yeah. like, Good well, you con- better find Christ, or you're going to burn in hell. Yeah. Then uh, you know. <laughs> Good luck converting people. Yeah, I really want to hang out with people like you, there, Keith. <laughs> I really want to hang out with people like you. So I'm sorry to those good Christians out there listening that that aren't like Keith, but it's the it's the loudmouths like Keith that uh, that do real damage to your religion and, and how people feel about it. Free Talk Live seven nights a week from seven to ten Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You're listening to the live Sunday night edition. Yes, we're live on Sunday night. Local time is uh, about 9.30 Eastern, and we are taking your calls at 855-450-3733. You can feel welcome to bring up anything that's on your mind that you'd like to discuss with us. We'll certainly have a conversation with you about just about anything, as long as it's uh, radio-friendly, of course. 855-450-FREE. One more time, 855 855- Four five zero three seven three three on the phone. Yeah, you can go get gold and silver at gold.freetalklive.com. We make it easy for you. We deal with uh, Midas Resources. They're our syndicate, as a matter of fact. You they, know, gold and silver are both down. You know, personally, this isn't investment advice or anything like that, but personally, I've been uh, loading up. <laughs> Personally, I silver. have uh, called uh, Midas Resources to the guy uh, I deal with is Ted Anderson, the guy who owns the company. Uh, but, you know, he's he and I've been doing business for years and years. And I decided I was, you know, the prices are just too good to pass up right now. So I called him Friday and I'm getting ready to make a purchase in silver. So it's, um, you know. Yeah, I, I I do this too. It's uh, gold.freetalklive.com. Last I saw, silver was at sixteen ten. It's not going to get much better than that, folks. Uh, wow. My highest recommendation is to get some silver now. Okay, my my expectation is it's not going to get any better than that. I don't know the answer as to what, whether gold yeah, and silver we, is going to go. Yeah, we just don't know. But. but so far in my entire life, silver's never been worth zero, and so <laughs> I I doubt that it's going to continue to stay below sixteen ten much longer. That would be my thought. So gold.freetalklive.com to get some. All right. Let's go to the phones where Dana is on the line in Michigan. Hi, Dana. You're on Free Talk Live. Hi, Hi Stephanie. Hi, everybody. Um, you, Stephanie, I just caught the tail end of that. The uh, IRS took 33000 because, is, am I correct, she made a deposit over $10,000, which has to be reported to the IRS? 
No, actually, unfor- the problem was actually the opposite. The The problem was that this lady ran a cash-only business, a Mexican restaurant, and she was depositing her payments in bundles that were less than $10,000, like between $9,000 and 9999 so that because she had heard, basically, um, she had heard from her mom that the bank would have to fill out extra paperwork, which is the reporting requirement, if she deposited over 10000 right. So she thought, oh, I'll make it easier on everybody, and then they got her for structuring. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, my bank told me um, that uh, keep it around 7000 and don't do it definitely, not daily, not even weekly, but, you know, try to spread it out. The problem is, is there are farmers who uh, bring in harvest, Mm-hmm. and have large bundles of money than not anything else during the rest of the year. Yeah. And there are florists who have big amounts of money. But what I wanted to tell you guys is um, the, under the Bush administration, uh, Bush 43, they had approximately only 100 of these cases in his whole tenure of eight years. And they were money law. I'm not saying everyone was, but under Bush, they went after money launderers that were legit. Under Obama, and I'm not taking anything away from this poor woman, but under Obama, in less than six years, they have increased that number over sevenfold, over 700 people, and there are farmers and florists and small business owners, Mm -hmm. and they cannot get the type of attorney because it's a very uh, specialized field to fight, not only to fight the federal government, but specialized also because of this. And so they make these deposits, and then they they just, they drain their account. They literally, and... Yeah, what are you going to do to fight that? It's impossible. Hundreds of millions of dollars. You know what, people, I just want to give a shout out to every single person who put Obama and his minions in office. And I'm not saying Bush was perfect or the Republicans. There's plenty of them. Uh, that guy that sounds like Mr. Ad, Mitch McConnell, there's there's some old time Republicans I can't stand. But you guys, you got to research now to date, not you guys, but I know you do your research. This is your job because you have a radio show. Oh, we didn't but vote for Obama. <laughs> it's set, I'm sorry? We didn't vote for Obama. I I, Mark did well, no, vote for Obama. You know, Mark, you guys, you, you're responsible for this. It's my fault. <laughs> Mark totally <laughs> voted for Obama. Sunday, <laughs> it's Sunday. Oh, you're in trouble, Mark, with me. <laughs> Sunday night. Not that McCain was great. I didn't vote for either one of those. Yeah, but you can always you. write someone in. But the thing is, is that it's Sunday night, people, and I don't mean you three. I mean the listeners. Get out. Get do some research and don't Google the first. Read the first stuff that comes up because it's going to be promos for these people. People need yeah. to do some research. I'm serious. I heard on um um. Uh, a money talk show. It was totally apolitical. It had nothing to do with politics, but affected politics. Um, Cudlow, Cudlow and Company, they talk about this stuff. There was two different financial experts that Cudlow and uh, this um, guy named Cudlow had on, and I listened to him Saturday afternoons. They said it is going to take decades, probably over 40 or 50 years, to the repair the damage that Obama has done to this country. Yeah. So I'm just so that but I wanted I, you I guys hear to you know did. Yeah. The IRS has been stealing money and don't kid yourself, you guys, if that administration didn't allow it, it wouldn't be happening. Uh, Alcum Bush only did a hundred and they were legitimate drug launderers in eight years and this dude has done in less than six over 700, and not one of these people have been able to successfully get their money back they can't afford a lawyer. Jeez. Thanks for the call, Dana. I appreciate I it. I, I'm, I'm yeah. with you. you I know, mean, it seems like the IRS is working for every president. Yeah but, yeah, but it goes beyond that because we actually, and this is a story we talked about a, a few weeks back on the Sunday show, uh, where you found out that, look, there's people... Like we read the story about New York where this guy was complaining about cash only businesses, which mm-hmm. is what this woman was running, saying, no, look, they're thieves. There's you know, no way they could be running cash only businesses in this day and age. And that's crazy because let me tell you, this this older woman, did they say how old she was? She is she is like a senior citizen. Okay, right. Yeah. 
So she has the right to only use the level of technology that she wants to use. It is not up to the customer to tell her what level of technology she's supposed to use. If yeah. she only wants to use, uh, you know, cash only, that's what she's used to for 50 years of her life, then that's all she has to use. And, she's not a and thief. Re- revenues of $33,000 a month for a restaurant, that's really not that much. No, no it's right. not much at all. Not yeah, I mean, are you barely clearing, you know, what, what you have to, you know, buy, you know, pay out to, just to get uh, supplies for your restaurant? Yeah. Um, there is a legit war on cash. Well, there's I mean, a war on anonymous, on, on the ability to anonymously transact. And that's that, what it is about cash. Yeah, and that cash allows for that. In fact, maybe uniquely, uh, perhaps even more so than Bitcoin, it allows for that. Yeah, uh, And yeah. so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is the thing is that it's not just the IRS. You've got people who clearly believe that if you run a cash-only business, if you're dealing in cash a lot, you are some kind of crook. And you know, that's that, disgusting. I agree. It trickles down too. Like, if, have you ever been to a grocery store that says, or a gas station that says, "Sorry, we can't break bills over twenty dollars." You know, we can't accept fifties sure. or hundreds. Fifty dollar bills, really? It's is oh, it, in, you can barely buy groceries for fifty dollars for a week. Yeah, in the <laughs> European Union, it's pretty much now like a like a regulation that look if someone in in those countries, if someone comes to you with a five hundred or a two hundred euro, you know, you really need to check them out. And now they're petitioning to get rid of those larger bills because they cannot believe that somebody actually mm. has that much money. Why did they make that in the first <laughs> place? I mean, the euro is not that old. Well, who, who made that decision in the yeah, 1990s, right. perhaps, to create 1,000-euro bills? I've <laughs> never seen a $1,000 bill. I've never seen a $5,000 bill. The same uh, or $500 bill. The, the same denominations from when I was a kid are the de- denominations we have now. Mm-hmm. Prices are up 10 times as much. We should have a $1,000 bill. We should have a $500 bill to replace the 50 and the 100, but we don't because they don't want you using cash. Yeah, they're hoping it's now just to make large fade transactions. Away over time. Yep. It's true. Let's talk to David listening in Arkansas. Hey, David, you're on Free Talk Live. Hello. What's on your mind tonight? Um, well, Back when I was younger, I started doing things I wasn't supposed to. I started dabbling in something. I ain't out with the wrong crowd and kind of dabbling in drugs and stuff. Witchcraft? David, I, David, hold that thought. We're we're up against the clock, but I want to hear what you have to say. So hold the line if you would. This is Free Talk Live. There's more coming up here on the Sunday show. If you've got thoughts, 855-450, free. Do you drink coffee? Was the last cup of coffee you had really good? Free Talk Live has teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you the best of the best coffee. Shade grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. Get a free pound to try it out. A free pound of the best of the best coffee. Help others one cup at a time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Hi folks, Ronnie McMullen here for Life Change Tea. Healthcare is a problem, whether you're for or against Obamacare. It's a mess. My question is, who do you trust? Do you want to be told what to do, or do you want to make your own decision? My opinion, preventative maintenance. Keeping your colon clean is preventative maintenance. A little exercise, a balanced diet, and drinking Life Change Tea. It tastes great, and it helps with constipation, high cholesterol, liver problems, acid reflux, and much, much more. And with the holiday season upon us, you can get some extra tea for free. Don't wait for Obama. Make your own decision. Order now. Call us at 928-308-0408. That's 928-308-0408. Or you can log on to getthetea.com. That's getthetea.com. Ridding yourself of harmful toxins is truly preventative maintenance. Getthetea.com. If you're struggling to pay or haven't been making your student loan payments, listen carefully to this urgent alert. Have you been out of school for 10 or more years and you're still making your student loan payments? Are your student loans past due or even in default? Can't go back to school because of an old student loan problem? 
Fast Track Student Loans can get your student loans out of default, stop any wage garnishments, stop collection calls, and stop seizure of your tax refund. Give yourself a break. Stop the stress and get your student loan payments down to as little as $25 a month based on what you can afford to pay. One quick 10-minute call could help you solve your student loan problems. So call right now. Not available in all states. Payments may vary based on income. 800-215-6813. 800-215-6813. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It is the last segment of tonight's program, but there's still time to get your calls in maybe at 855-450-3733. We'll do our best to get to you. It's me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. And uh, let's get right into it, shall we? Unless, Mark, you have anything to say? All right. David in Arkansas was on the line. And David, you were starting to tell us your story. You said when you were younger, you were hanging out with the wrong crowd. And why don't you pick it up from there? Yeah, I was hanging out with the wrong crowd, and, uh, uh, you know, they, they, they was uh, people that was doing meth and stuff, and I started getting worried. They started saying that, uh, well, don't don't mention meth over the phone because the cops can tap into your cell phone and hear what you're saying and stuff. And it just makes me wonder, that was years and years ago, uh, well, probably about six, seven years ago, and I don't do drugs or anything. Well, I, I don't do meth, but anyway, uh, I drank it every once in a while but anyway it just makes me wonder like what can they hear you saying now you know like where's the privacy i remember back in the late 90s using yahoo email and somebody telling me that the government was monitoring it back then for words like bomb and things like that so you shouldn't say bomb in an email and uh i mean it seems like it might be kind of true with the snowden revelations but what do you do about it do you live in a constant state of paranoia do you uh censor yourself or do you just say what you're going to say it, it's really hard well, to tell and thanks for the call david it's an interesting question what do you think just real quick i mean i think the answer is and of course i run a tech show so i have to think about this a lot i think the answer is to just you know act like everything you're typing out or whatever you're doing digitally is going to be seen but make that process as expensive as possible for they, them, those. And so you, know, and you do that by using encryption of some kind and perhaps getting away from companies that are very uh, blatant about the fact that they do you know, scan your emails and whatever. What about putting out like disinformation? Some people use that. Yeah, tactic, that's called spam you know? encryption, yeah. uh, or at least that's a term I've heard, and I like that. And yeah. uh, that's that's certainly something to do. I mean, when so I recommend, for instance, it write a bunch of innocuous emails about you know um, charity bombs and things, love right. bombs, and you yeah. Know. Some people would say their filters can get past all that, but uh, you know, it's up to you. Either way, make it expensive for them. Yeah, right on. Let's go to Nathan, who's calling on Skype. Hey, Nathan, you're you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, guys. I'm still trying to recover from the fact that Sean Hannity said something untrue. I know, man. <laughs> I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, Nathan. <laughs> or Brian. Yeah. Brian was. Just, just, just. So I called a few weeks ago about a literary theory involving insanity uh, and magic in literature. And uh, I don't know if you want me to recap it briefly. You're going to have to. No, we've got three calls okay. on the line. We want to try to get to all of them. So try to try to be quick if you can. 
Okay, so the theory is basically that magic in literature represents a kind of insanity, and the example I used was Harry Potter because there are a lot of allusions to insanity in Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. So what I wanted to do is argue against that theory briefly by using the Chronicles of Narnia as an example of the claim that magic is not insanity, but rather creativity. Um, so okay. anyone who's engaged in creative thinking has probably had the experience where, you know, you're looking at something ordinary and then you kind of, you know, a burst of insight comes to you and then you, you know, you see the solution to the problem and it's created, it's created out of nothing and you feel like you've kind of reached a higher understanding. And if you look at Narnia uh, by C.S. Lewis, I, you see that pattern a lot where, uh, you know, she goes in the magic wardrobe and opens it you know, opens up to a new universe. And mm -hmm. again, in fact, I think in all the books, there's some kind of like, you know, magical portal to another universe that uh, happens in the story. Like it's a painting in one of the other books and it's like a hidden, I don't know, bunker in the school and the other book and that kind of thing. Yeah. Innovation and, uh, is magic. I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, and yeah, because go ahead. Oh, sorry. I just wanted to sort of summarize. So it's like, it's like, it's saying that, uh, it, uh, it's kind of like that magical pool in the sixth book where they go to and the, it's sort of like a forest and uh, you can go to any universe that exists through that uh, that forest. Uh, I think that's the metaphor here because uh, because it so, represents expansion. That sounds like reading mind. to me. So it's interesting. You can go anywhere you want if you, you read. You brought up these two opposing yeah. th theories, Nathan, because we're short on time. I want to wrap this up pretty soon. But which one do you tend to agree with more? Um, well, I haven't had a lot of time to think about it, but I would guess I, I, I came up with this one and I tend to agree with it more because, uh, because it, you came it up seems with it. More, <laughs> yeah. well, because you could look at magic as if you look at it, you could look at it as anti-rational or you could look at it as above rational or enhancing the rational. And when you come up with a new idea, you know, you can't see it with reason with your rational faculty, but you know, your, your mind expands, then you see it. So that's kind of magical in a way. Cool. Right on. I like it. Thanks for the call tonight, Nathan. Yeah. Uh, that's... Kind, of, kind of like Arthur C. Clarke says, where, you know, at a certain level, technology is indistinguishable from magic. And so innovation could, in a sense, be magical. Yeah. I'm a fan of that idea. All right. Let's go to Dennis in North Carolina has a story about government monitoring. Hey, Dennis, you're on Free Talk Live. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. First, I want to uh, agree with Nathan on his point that, uh, I'm horny for Lucy, and I want to suck her tits. Oh, <laughs> sorry, we got it. We can't uh, allow that to go out on the radio. I got to dump you there. Hope I'm getting it in time. I assume the board op got him too. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you can. Uh, I don't know. It's it's not exactly. He didn't exactly say one of the seven dirty words, but he said something that was a kind it of... It was one of the seven dirty words, but it's one you can say. It's just pointless. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's talk to Earl listening in New York. Hey, Earl, you're on Free Talk Live. Good evening. Hi. Um, to the young man about 12 minutes ago, what you said, what, how you felt about the name The Redskins. Good for you. Uh, by the way, it's Jim Thorpe. Ah, thanks. He, and he won, he was, he is famous for winning multiple, multiple uh, gold medals then. They found because he was, I think, a semi-professional baseball player. They took his medals away. Yeah, he was okay. the uh, the greatest athlete that's ever lived, essentially. Yes, yes. And in fact, um, his people are trying to uh, to get his uh, remains moved. From, I believe he's buried in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and. Uh, his remains moved back. And Miss Stephanie? Yes. I'm at Keen Rebellion there. Pumpkin Fest. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not, yep. everything. Not everything's a conspiracy. <laughs> sure. I, I don't think most things are conspiracies. I guess I was just being a little bit facetious <laughs> there. You're referencing a few weeks ago when we talked about a 